Hey guys, welcome back to the Super Retriever Series 2023 Crown Championship presented by Yukonuba. J. Paul Jackson back here, and while we were at the break, we had uh, my longtime co conspirator and Super Retriever Series Crown Championship host, David Hamilton, arrive and join Pat and I here. David, great to see you, buddy. Great to be here, man. I was hoping to be here last night and be here all day, but an unnamed airline and I are at feuds. Uh, but I got here just a little while ago, been watching the live stream. You and Pat have been doing a phenomenal job. Glad to join the two of you here and call uh, Series 4. So uh, earlier today, quarterfinals, we saw the pros go uh, after the amateurs went yesterday. And then now we're here at Series 4, the semifinals, 12 amateurs, 12 pros. And then we'll cut the field to six for the finals. So uh, about to have the test dog here. And uh, Jay paul looks like, once again, the judges have quite an amazing test for us. Yeah, they've set up another big, big test here. Uh, basically, we're going to have three marks. A big mark comes out all the way across the lake here. You can see the guns over on the far side. We're about to run the test dog here. A few minutes we'll also be uh, getting a look at some really, really good drone footage from this. Pat Burns, who's been with me since the very beginning of this thing, and it's gonna stick around to the very end. He's running the drone right now. So kick off the test dog, your go bird, comes right across that spit of water. Looks like we're gonna have a quick handle here, bringing the dog out to it. Speaking of Pat, super grateful to have him along with us this year. I mean, he's out here. He's a man doing everything, right? He's been helping you on the live stream in my absence. He's been uh, providing a lot of great insights. A lot of our handlers have even said, you know, they're picking up things. Some of these very experienced handlers say they're still taking notes on, on advice that he's been given over the live stream, which is which is huge for us uh, as we have members of our audience who are just starting out in this sport and people have been in this sport for 30 years uh, tuning in. And he, he's been able to give insights for everyone there and he's operating the drone now. so. Uh, really glad that Pat's able to join us here. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. I'm one of those guys that's been at it for 30 years, and I've learned so much from him in the last three days. I feel like I ought to write him a tuition check. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite an education. So coming back to our dog here, running test dog, we've got cannon shot out across the lake, the long bird. Over here to the left, falling in the area of the decoys where we were running our land line in the third quarterfinal series. We have a mark, and then the go bird comes out directly across a small spit of water, splitting the two over there on the point. When you were talking to the judges, do the uh, handlers have to pick up these birds in any particular order? <clears throat> you know, I'm not sure about that. I really didn't uh, get in on the judges' conversation, but I believe Pat did, so we'll get that information from him when he comes back. Awesome. I do know that from the line, the yardage on this long bird across the lake it comes in at about 295 yards. You can see all the handlers there on our feed. We just got our monitor back up and running, having a discussion. It's Nobody's always great to watch these guys talk during the uh, test bird and see who's kind of analyzing things by themselves and who's bouncing ideas off of each other. But it's always interesting here to just watch the handlers all that are there together as they try to plan their strategy here. Yeah, and you can see nobody seems too concerned about the bird to the left that dog's going for right now. Everybody's really being focused on that log bird across the water there. And that's definitely going to be your money bird. As a former Super Retriever Series champion yourself, sir, what is the biggest obstacle uh, for these handlers and dogs here in Series 4, in your opinion, if you were running at the line? So there are a couple of things that stick out to me. First of all, it'll be interesting to see where this dog picks up the bird, but I believe that's going to come back and when the dog picks up the bird, the true line to this mark is going to catch that cove of water. You are a long way from the edge of that water, and it is an angled entry. I'm sure there's going to be a significant penalty for a dog that cheats this bird. When I say cheats this bird, I mean runs around the water uh, instead of going, taking a line through it. Now, of course, I'm assuming that is indeed the case because I haven't seen the dog pick it up or the throw from the line. As we continue to watch the uh, test dog here in Series 4, this morning we ran quarterfinal Series 3 for the Open, or what we call the, the pro competitors. Yesterday, the amateurs ran. Today, same test but different test, meaning same layout, but obviously different conditions this morning, etc. Well, well, what, uh, for those who were not you know, tuning in, who may just be joining us in action here for Series 4, just give us your overall thoughts of, of how that uh, open division went this morning. I tell you what, man, it was 
It was a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. For some of the guys, I, I'm sure that they would say that it was brutal. Right, see, right there, let's go back to your earlier question, then we'll pick back up on that. Absolutely. So you asked me about the keys to this test. Mm -hmm. you know, that dog got wet going, it's getting wet coming back. It's a long way from the line to the edge of that water. So first key, you got to get wet on the way to that bird. I've got to feel like there's going to be a significant penalty for anybody that cheats and skirts that water. Second key, this middle bird, it's a go bird. I think that we're going to see several dogs that drive straight across that spit of water up onto the, the big point there through that heavy cover and, and pick it up. If you can do that clean, it's going to be a key factor to this. Other dogs are going to handle on it, and I think that's going to be a deciding factor there. Probably going to see most dogs drive on across and get dry for that pretty dog on quick. And if you're going to have a chance here to lay down a good score, you're going to have to be one of those dogs. And then, of course, we've got the big right-hand bird, and right. that really is the meat of this test. You know, if I had to divide this, this test into percentages, I would say that the go bird is probably going to be 10% of the test. Mm -hmm. The left-hand bird is probably going to be 25% of the test, particularly has great vision and is a good marker. And being a good marker is not about memory necessarily. Marking and memory we generally look at as two different things. Memory is, hey, does the bird dog remember where the bird landed? Marking is the dog's ability to see it, track it, watch it hit the ground. Your dogs that are really good markers that have that vision and see that, that's going to be a key because if you really want to kill this test, you've got to drive all the way to that bird. Yeah, complementary skill set there. You have to watch it fall, then you also have to remember where it fell. Exactly. And then obviously, the more directly you go to it, the better score you're going to have. So if I'm coming up here as a handler, I want to have my dog drive across the water, make it up there on the point, and at least get into the fall area and put on a hunt. I want to have my dog get good and wet coming for this left-hand bird. And then I'm going to give my dog a really, really large send-off. And I'm going to try to drive that dog across both bodies of water. For those of you who have been watching all week, this is the same property where we had Series 3. Uh, so just obviously a different setup, but we are set up at the same location uh, for our semifinals where we ran our quarterfinals. Yeah, and I'll tell you, David, you weren't here for day one, but you missed a great hunt test in our first series. Of course, Super Retriever Series rules for those guys that don't have a lot of experience here. They require that in the Crown Championship, in the first two series, we run a hunt test and a field trial. Doesn't matter which we run first, but you've got to do that combination. Yep. If test could, one was an AKC-style hunt test. Uh, series two was a field trial. Series three was kind of a land and water hunt savvy test. Definitely a hunt savvy test, for sure. Here we are at uh, series four. And this is a big field trial test. Mm -hmm. This dog's done a good job driving across the water, had to handle early, but made a great, great recovery. I tell you, when that dog broke down and he gave that dog the cast off of that big point out there in front of us, I really didn't expect it to continue and drive and pick up that bird as cleanly as it did. It was interesting to me because normally I'm the one, you know, calling the live stream and this, this year I was watching it and I wanted to say I've been doing a fantastic job there, but also social media team. Uh, I think that, that Shannon and the crew and Bailey and everyone's been doing a great job uh, with social media, keeping everyone up to date. It's been, a, it's been a big week, like you said. We started the week off with the Big Hats and Bow Ties event that I know everyone loves so much. Uh, gave away a boat. <laughs> And then uh, have been having, uh, like we said, uh, just several days here of competition. With started out with uh, over 90 dogs, and uh, here we are with uh, 24. 12 amateurs left, 12 pros left. Obviously, you can follow along here with us on the live stream. You can also check into the Facebook page and the Instagram account, Super Retriever Series. Big shout out, uh, 10,000 followers now on the Instagram page. That's huge. Uh, as the sport continues to grow in popularity. And uh, we're just grateful to be here to bring it uh, to all of you at home who are watching, whether you uh, 
are an owner of one of these dogs or a friend of one of the handlers or just a, a fan in general. Uh, but again, finishing up kind of here the, the test dog and then we'll get started with, with series four. We're going to try to get through this event completely today, 24 dogs to run here. Judges said their goal was to run all 24 today and have the finals tomorrow, but if we are unable to do that, um, they may shut it down after the 12 AMs today and resume with the 12 open dogs tomorrow to make sure everybody that's competing against one another gets to say this, see the same picture here. Which is what they did yesterday as well, yep. right? You don't, want, you don't want four dogs getting one scenario of climate, wind, etc., and the other eight getting something else and saying, hey, well, that's not fair. They got better or worse scenario. Amen. Exactly. So we're wrapping up our test dog there, all of our handlers. Heading back, and then we'll get started here in just a few moments. But you are watching the 2023 Super Retriever Series Crown Championship presented by Yukonuma. Waited a long while to get to say that. A little jealous, <laughs> had a little FOMO, a little fear of missing out. You were getting to say my line. Oh, man, I was wanting I... to draw out your hello. Hello. takes a dog that not only hit, can do what we do for training, but a dog that hunts. The old days of being really good at one side or the other and kind of waffling through the, the side that you're not good at are, are, are done. You've got a lot of work to go in to get there. And if you're somebody that's going to get your feelings hurt easily, if it doesn't go well, this, this probably isn't a great game for you. You know, these dogs have got to hunt to have that experience to be able to handle some of the situations that we get put in. This is not a young dog game, <laughs> and if you're going to be if you're going to be good at SRS, you better be good at something else. You better be really good at field trials. You better be really good at hunt tests. But if you absolutely love training your dog and working with your dog and trying to get better as a team, and you're someone that likes to perform at a high level, then this is a perfect game for you. They might not be great field trial dogs. Now, almost every one of them are great hunt test dogs. But all around, from A to Z, these guys are the best. The Super Retriever Series Crown Championship is presented by Yukonuba. Sporting dogs give us everything we ask and then some. Their nutrition should do the same. And by the Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission, teaming up with our community to bring sporting events to Shreveport Bossier City, Caddo and Bossier Parishes. Margaritaville Resort Casino. Louisiana Tourism, Feed Your Soul. Thor's Boats, Drop the Hammer. Splash Super Pools. And by Lucky Duck Kennels. Your puppy only gets one start to set the foundation for a lifetime of performance at your side. Fuel growth and activity, support digestive health, and give him a training edge to one day flush, point, track, retrieve. So when the gear comes out, he'll be ready. Make every milestone count with game-changing puppy fuel. Yukonuba Premium Performance Puppy Pro. The Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission is here to help you with your amateur, collegiate, professional, or Olympic sporting event. Centrally located in the Arklatex area, Shreveport Bossier is a premier sports destination, ideal for hosting sporting events of any size. With our wide variety of venues, including stadiums, convention centers, rivers, and universities, we are sure to have the perfect location for any event. Our team is ready to make your event a success. Visit us online at ShreveportBossierSports.com or on Facebook at Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission and let us host your next event. Two birds of a feather. 
We flock together every day, and I'll do anything to protect that loyalty. Durable, dependable, and downright dirty. And I'm not just talking about my dog. This five-star crash test rated kennel is lightweight, secure, and made right here in America. Loyalty goes both ways. The Splash Supercool is the original above-ground, soft-sided pool. We've been in business for almost 40 years now. We're still proudly made in the USA. And we've been serving our community in all kinds of ways. They're all testaments as to the strength and the durability of this super pool. And we've been serving the dock diving community for almost 20 years. The pool that they use is the exact same pool that you'll use in your backyard. So just remember, as you're watching these dogs fly through the air, this is the same super pool that you could have in your backyard. Splash Super Pools. Welcome back to the 2023 Super Retriever Series Crown Championship presented by Yukonuba. Hello everyone, I'm your host David Hamilton alongside Pat Burns, of course J. Paul Jackson been here all week. In fact, Pat and J. Paul have gotten you all to this point. I am now here for the semifinals, excited to be here with the two of them. Uh, if you were watching just a moment ago with the test, with the test dog, uh, it was myself and J. Paul. Now I'm sitting here with Pat and Pat you were over there operating the drone, you were watching the test dog. Tell us your thoughts on Series 4 here. We have 12 amateurs, 12 pros. We're going we're gonna to cut the field to six of each after this test. And so you were up there. You were seeing the test that our judges have designed here and, and, and saw how the handlers are strategizing, how they're going to handle this. But uh, just tell us uh, a little bit about the test itself and how you might possibly handle this if you were up the line. We've got some decisions to make. But here's the meat of this test is a long retired gun mm -hmm. that You've got a little bit of an angle entry into the first piece of water, but there's a lot of land, and I don't think the dog, oh, the dog's not even going to know that the last piece of water's there, so they're going to get very surprised. But they, they've got to run it across, I don't know, it's going to be 125 yards of land, and then re-enter and make about the equivalent amount of swim on the re-entry. It's, it's a tough deal, and uh, I think, you know, that's certainly going to be the most difficult part of this, I would guess. You could always screw up some of these short birds. I think the decision handlers are going to have to make is they may decide to go for that right bird second versus third. They, a few handlers did that on the first field trial test. They thought getting those two birds as a pair was an option. It didn't work great in the first. I bet you some handlers are going to consider that here. In other words, you have to pick up the middle bird first. They've mm -hmm. dictated that. And I think most dogs would because it's the last bird down. The decision you have at that point, do you go for the left bird second, or do you go right back over the top of that bird and go for the long retired? I'd be awful tempted to do that if I was the first running dog. During the, during the test dog, you were up there operating the drone, and, and everyone was watching at home was watching on the jib, but the, you know our jib's several feet off the ground above the tents there, so the jib is, is twice as tall as any handler. So the jib, you only see the dog disappear for a couple moments. But for the handlers, you were saying the judges say that there might be 12 to 15 seconds in there where the handler may not be able to see his dog. How much of a disadvantage oh, is that on this test? It's man? huge. It's huge because you don't know what they're doing. You know, if they get in and swim across with conviction, you're going to see them eight seconds-ish. But if they get in and hunt the edge of the water, it could be 30 seconds. You may not see them until they pop back up on this shore. There's a good chance they're going to show up on the right shore. There's a real tempting piece of land point that's on the right shore that's actually in, almost in line with the gun station. I think if they climb there, they're going to get come up behind that long gun. And, well, here's our first dog. Yep. You're going to definitely want to cue this bird with your hand and really focus on getting that dog to fix on those white jackets across the big lake. Taking a look here at Joe. Carter Turner is the handler. They've got a flasher there. That bird showed up reasonably well. Good to meet you, Pat. Quite a delay here when this is hybrid scenario. This is something very unique to me. You know, I train out here, Pat. That, that bottom line, I've run that bottom line several times. We've run it with one poison bird. As you know, in our, in our thing, we can't have more than two on the ground at the same time. I'm on over the beating right now. Go! 
Okay, well, first thing you got to do is just not screw up the first bird. The cleaner you get this bird, the more you identify kind of where you've been. Sometimes when you get that hunting between one mark and the other, the confusion, sometimes a dog doesn't know where he's been. So you can't worry about that long bird. You got it right now, you got to worry about getting this go bird. The advantage of going for this right bird second is going to be that you're going to be able, the dog is going to be more aware that he's just been to this spot right here. If you do this and leave it and go to this left bird, the temptation to go back into that middle bird I think is a little stronger. Whereas if you go and then go to the right of it and the dog says, okay, I've been to this area, I know there's already been a bird over right, here, so exactly. it's more likely there's another one over in this other direction. That old fall can right. help you there, but when you leave it, and, you, and we call it letting that area cool off if you leave it, sometimes the dog, if you go right back past it, right after you've picked it up, they're a lot less likely to stop there and hunt, in my opinion. Well, looks I can see him setting up. He looks like he's going to go left next. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I'm going to go over here, pick up that left one, and then go for that long bird there on the right. You know, it's it, you know in training, a lot of times that's what I would typically do. I save, yeah, save, save, save the dedicated swim for last. It's got to be kind of what you're what you're trying to decide to do. But uh, well. You know, this left-hand bird is thrown in at you pretty hard. You can, the test dog hunted that bird. Well, actually, he even handled on it. I think they moved, they had a bunch of decoys from the water blind on the edge of the water. I think they pulled some of those, but they left the decoys that were in the field. Now you pull and try to get too much water. You know, you did do the water blind out in that corner. I wouldn't think they'd go there, but let's see where he's going here. And there is a temptation to run around the pond altogether and cheat the left edge, but that's certainly not what happened here. But I'll tell you what, I think he's... Yeah, he's, I see, there, he's, he's headed towards, and right now, so we're headed towards that water blind, or to the po the second point that was on the water blind. Mm -hmm. That's more where the po sec second yeah. longer poison bird was from the water blind. I think if you land considerably right of this bird, you're going to end up handling. I wonder if he's thinking about doing it right now. That's a good question for you. So in this situation right here, are you going to wait till he gets to land, or are you going to go ahead and correct him right here in the water? Well, yeah. if I have an instinct, oh, I think good. he's going to go to land and be able to figure it out on his own. Look at it. He just made a move. Yep. And that holding blind is there. And you know, that's almost, and it's not camo that much. I think the dog looked up and finally saw the square holding blind. That helped him break over. But for a minute there, it looked like he was headed long. But he's upwind in a little bit. He's kind of between the two poison birds. But you got to realize, they're sent from a lot of throws right in that area where he is from the previous test. You can tell by the way the dog's acting, he's a little bit nervous, but he's... My guess is when he gets, he'll come back and he'll try to hunt that holding blind, because it's really the only thing in the field to hunt. I see him kind of trying to use the wind, but he's not quite getting the information he's looking for. Yep. Yeah, he liked to put the, put the whistle on there. I don't think he had much choice. And he wasn't that far from the bird, but he was always upwind of the thing. So yep. he didn't really get any information. All right. Well, we're going to see what happens here. I think you're going to see the handler take a much more aggressive posture here because he's really got to will him across those two pieces of water. Carter giving him a couple of claps of encouragement as he heads back here to the line. Of course, Joe's a six-year-old male. Lining him up for the long yeah. bird here. Yeah, he's got a real good routine. I've watched him all the last few days. He, he gets a pre-delivery look. He really wants the dog pointed in the direction the instant he, before he even takes the bird out of his mouth. Look at him trying to get a read on where he's looking. You're gonna, hear no! a You're gonna hear that big send. Here's a big part of this. 
see how the angle of this first channel is? It's going to really encourage the dogs to pop out right. Now, if they start right and keep right, well, this dog's making sure. Right. Well, standing up for us isn't going to do much help. Is it? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Stood up to try to see, and I'm like, still can't see him from where we are. And you got to think the handlers are having a little bit of the same challenge. Out now, there. if he can get across, he can. That 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 tree that looks like it's further off the water is actually on the edge of the water. And he's going to find. If he finds those gunners, he'll. I, I would guess eventually he'd work it out. Well, we're all looking for him. I think we're going to. We're going to see him show up. Over here on the right, going towards us, a couple of... Oh, there he is, right there. Right there. Great work by the camera crew, as always. Yeah. And even if our eyes can't see okay, it Okay, so here. there's the hole in He's found the gunners. Everybody's good here. I don't think the handler could see him. I agree. I don't think Carter Boom. can see him from here. Now he can see There's him. a little bit of a ridge there. That, that, that Because the jib's so much higher, you don't appreciate it on screen. But there's a little ridge to the right of the holding line that if the dog's just a little bit deep, you can't see him. Why you got the bird there? Well, came up with it. I think you're spot on that that's going to be a challenge for some of these handlers. Is we just saw Carter take off his hat, try to use it a little bit as a shield to try to see because the, there's an area in that dip where they come back up where you can't see the dog, plus he's got the elements of the sun in your face. Yeah, It's going to be a challenge for these handlers, and they're going to have to trust their dog in certain scenarios. Too bad they don't have a jumbotron they can look at. <laughs> like a football player running down on a kickoff looking to see if anybody's behind him. Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, I meant to time that. I'm going to time this next one. Our first of our... 12 here, of course, we have 24 total, 12 amateurs, 12 pros, as we said, here in the semifinals. That gives you a good perspective that you can't tell from the line right there. See how that, there's a little piece of water that's, mm -hmm. what, watch the dog's return here. There's a, see there's a little channel of water, not very much water though there. And so, you know, dogs are, for the most part, they're going to prefer to stay on land versus be in the water, so that'll... That'll put him to the right. And, and just to give everybody at home some perspective, we're set up almost directly behind the handlers at the line, uh, slightly to the left, and I just counted eight seconds that I couldn't see the dog. So if I don't see him for eight seconds, Carter isn't seeing him for oh, eight seconds. Yeah. But he came back with three birds. It's That's the important what, part, putting in the yeah. score, right? Yeah. You certainly can't, obviously can't take that left bird for granted. Hopefully Rick can get that, just stay on the handle. By going for that right bird second, you're going to probably make the left bird harder. So it's a decision the well, handler's got to make. And at this point in the game, you've got 24 of the best well-rounded dogs in the world. They've worked with these handlers all year long. They've worked with these handlers for several years. Dog knows the handler, handler knows the dog. And to your point, the decision that you make of which bird you go get first and, and what you do could be the difference between uh, a 12th oh. place finish and a first place finish. Exactly. <laughs> Well, we got a moment here before the next dog steps the line. I'd mentioned a few moments ago that uh, Super Retriever Series recently hit 10,000 followers on Instagram, and because of that, they're doing a giveaway. So uh, if you tag a friend, uh, like and subscribe on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, you could win a Lucky Duck Kennel, two bags of Yukonuba Premium Performance with a complimentary nutrition consultation with one of the Yukonuba Pro representatives, a Yeti Dog Bowl, wet mutt bumpers and a ton of SRS swag. Talk about a great prize package there. So if you're on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, please like and subscribe and tag a friend to enter into this great contest. And of course, we'll name the winner before the weekend is over. This guy didn't waste much time up there. Nope. Well, there's, you can only point out one gun, so. Ha, ha, ha.
And again, they've designated that you must pick up this middle bird first. For those of you watching at home who are, aren't as familiar in some of the tests, there is a designation, a go bird that you have to go to and pick up first. And then, as we were talking a moment ago, handlers can, can generally pick up the okay. other birds in their own mm -hmm. preference. So here we may see some after this go bird go to the left, or we may see some go pick up that long right first, depending on what they're feeling with the conditions and the dog's temperament and just how they're feeling out the situation today. The dog didn't act like he saw that bird very well. It just it was something a little funny on the line. And while J. Paul Jackson has stepped away, we're going to welcome Luke Core here in the booth with us. So Luke's going to be chatting with us here for a couple minutes. And, and Luke, uh, we've gotten Pat's thoughts here on uh, this Series 4 test. I uh, would love to hear your insights and what you're thinking of this test and how, you know, the handlers should probably uh, go up there and handle here the challenge they're facing in Series 4. It's a good test. It's definitely a big test. It's going to kind of separate the dogs. I think a dog with the, they're looking for a dog that's going to have be able to bounce back with a little bit more field trial advantage from coming back from the hunt savvy. I agree with Pat. I don't think he saw that bird and you saw John try to really talk him in and send him with a soft scent and didn't drop his hand and, and in the case of you have a standout gun out there long so he's trying to talk him into checking down but when Henry took off he saw those gunners the long bird and was headed that way. Pat was saying a moment ago obviously as we know after they pick up the go bird they can either go to the left or to the right there's advantages and disadvantages of both if you were up here at this uh, line right now which would you do and why? I would probably go left next just because it's hard to go it's hard to go long long short generally mm -hmm. you want to try to get your check down bird out of the way and then push them long the dogs based on how majority of us train and most of how yeah. majority of our tests are set up your your last send is most of the time going to be your long birds you're going to you're more likely to get your drive and your push on that last hard send rather than sending hard and driving across that pond and then coming back and asking them to check down. You know, I always look, can I get it? What bird can I get if they forget? Right. That's right. Now, you, the you one advantage to this one, the holding blind is pretty obvious. I mean... But also can be a disadvantage because you can see right here, Henry is pulling him out of the water a little early. He's going to put him under the arc. Because yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard in throw. Yeah. So you got to hump back short. Oh, nice. Oh, or you can just, go, or you can just go grab it like nice. he did. <laughs> so I'll tell you one deal that we're not really appreciating that I saw on the drone is this first channel has got just enough angle to it. In other words, the dog that wants to square it is going to come out right. Just like you saw Henry do on that first thing. Exactly. Yep. And whether he was going long or he was just uncertain and squared, I don't know. But he was in a place that you know, he made a quick handle. How's that going to affect his perception on this long bird? That's going to be interesting. All you're trying to do is get that dog to remember the gun stood there and then just will him across. Him. And Jay Paul worded it perfectly, and you guys know this, and probably everyone at home knows this, but if they are new to the game, you know, marking and memory are complementary, but they're not the same thing. Right? Mm -hmm. you got to mark it, but then you also have to remember where it went. And so yeah. here's your square. Yep. Here's your square here. I think some of these deceptive angles are harder than really sharp. They're hard for the dog to interpret. What do you do here? I mean, that, you don't do any of that. He's going to. problem here is he's going to make some decisions in areas you can't see him and you're not going to know what to do. Well, he's, he's as nervous as I am. <laughs> he's cutting back left. Well, the key here is going to be finding the holding line. See, at that point, you're going to get little or no water. See that? There's that little. Well, there he showed up going once again. Yeah, go find the gun. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to do. I think originally they were thinking of putting this bird quite a bit left, but there's a kind of an old dock in the water that they were a little concerned about. Dog safety always comes first. Looks like he may. You can tell when they kind of identify. All right, here's the gun. The bird's got to be here somewhere. It's got, got to get 
further away from the gun station. Well, that's right. That's not where they threw from. They threw from get somewhere in there. Getting some wind now. Finally in the vicinity of it. Yeah, I don't know what he's. See, I think the bird's further left, isn't it? Yeah. There should be. There, there. It's going to be over right in there. There. Boom. Okay. You got to appreciate that that hunt. You know, he kind of put on uh. a smart hunt. He he chose, picked all of his options on that gun. He came down and hunted up close to the water's edge. And a lot of dogs don't like to hunt right there on the water's edge. Um, and so he figured it out. You know, it's not the, it's not quite what John was looking for. I'm sure, but but Henry worked it out and, and got that bird clean. You know, when you talk about good per bird placement and things like that, when a dog decides to cheat the water, you want to make it so it's harder to find the bird. Right, that's right. that was a good example. Yeah. The dog ended up having a substantial hunt uh, because he just he pulled right, squared the first deal, and uh, well, there's certainly some room at the top here, isn't there? First two dogs have handled. Be curious to see on how they score these two dogs that have come up right like that because that's going to kind of be, be your decision yeah, maker on exactly. what these handlers are going to do. But how are you, okay, i got to ask you, how are you going to interpret that? Do you have a pretty good idea? Because both of them handled on an early bird. Right. I think I think you'll have a better interpretation on this one because he got that bird really clean. He won whistle handle on the middle bird. So 90% of his score is going to come from the right hand bird. You know. And you know the dog before had a little bit of a had a handle and had also had a little bit of a hunt, you know. So it's going to be a little bit harder to interpret on quite how much. But this is going to be your dog that everybody's going to be standing there waiting for this score to show up. So what is your, this handler stood up to send for the go bird? Didn't I see the first handler to just cut him loose from the? Uh, from the seated position? I think maybe the, the, the first handler might have figured his dog saw enough of that bird. He didn't feel like he needed to get in too much in his way. Um, and I think John probably figured that Henry didn't see any of it, didn't gather any information right. from the line. Yeah. So he needed to step up and show him where yeah. that bird was at and talk him into it the best he could. And I always told my, my amateur handlers and nationals, when in doubt, you need to find where the gun is. That's right. I mean, so. If, if I get that, I'm going to turn and point him right at that tree yeah. where the gun is and hope. But the, the test dog went out in the middle of the pond. Yeah. It was really a strange deal. And I, and I think John had him lined up under the arc, but you just like you said, they're squared across that channel and just put him in a bad spot. All right. Well, here we go again. John Lamar and Pine. Pine's an SRS champion, um, and he's also a Grand Hunting Retriever champion. So when you see a dog that's got a Grand Hunting Retriever champion, you got to think they have a little bit of more of an advantage to see this go bird because they, those dogs swing with the gun very often. So if you were going to bet on this, over, under, handle, 10. Would you pick under or over 10? For the dogs, 10 dogs handling? Yeah. Oh, over. You, no, I'm saying t dogs that don't handle. Dogs that be, don't handle under. Will there be under or over 10 dogs? I think under. Under, yeah. Well, that also depends on how these scores come out, you know. Yeah, you're right. Strategy might change later in the day. You see John switch hand. He shot with the right and then switched to a left-handed shot. The big reason that a lot of us do that is to keep the dog from having to move their body. You can just use their head position uh -huh. because if you're swinging with just your right or just your left, you might have to increase the dog's movement with their body by switching from one hand to the other. Right. You're more likely to be able to get them just to position their head. Like you've got a back sense, so we must have not seen it. Holy smokes. You know, You spend all this time planning how you're going to send for the longbird, and you can't get this one. Right. He's 
making a little move in that direction, but the dog took off in a really un, kind of a nervous, unsure fashion that kind of had to tell you that I don't know how much he saw the bird. Well, he's not squaring across. He's actually got in right and he's angled left. You'll know a lot more about three steps out of the That's water. That's right. Get out. Well, I think he's just trying to like stay win it out, stay in the water. Okay. Oh, I'll be darn. He actually is going to come spot. out in a pretty good spot, yeah. isn't he? Oh. Well, he feels like he's on the brink of almost popping or something. He's just he's waiting for the whistle. Yeah, he is. Uh, 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 uh. I can see it now. Well, you got it. <laughs> yep. A good job by John by reading that dog and, 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 and watching his body language and watching him make those decisions. And I'm sure John was at the brink of blowing a whistle, but Pine gave him that little left hand turn and, and, he, and, he, and he let him roll and trusted him to go work it out. Pine and John, through three series, have a total at 258. So coming in here, uh, we have 12 amateurs left, right? We uh, have 12 pros. Uh, Obviously, we run reverse order, so 12th, 11th, 10th currently. Uh, is there enough meat here to move up significantly for these handlers? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, think you, I think, you know, we've seen in every series that there's been an opportunity for a lead change and a big shift. You know, you saw some dogs that came from 18th and 17th to now they're in the top 12. Um, you know, so I think there's an opportunity to go from first to last and last to first year. And as you see, you know, a lot of it, sometimes we, we may see a few dogs do it pretty good and you see the conditions change just right. a little bit and, and you can get a streak of, of some hard runs. And so you just never know. So if I was thinking about going for the right bird second, I wouldn't do it with this dog. Because I think just that uncertainty, this dog would, I think this dog would push way right if I tried to stick him right back there. Because he, because you're sending him down a similar line? Yeah, and he was just, he, he was real tense about that. Uh, I think, you know, we, we talk in our game about letting that area cool off. Yeah. In other words, you leave it, and, and then I back. think you can talk them back in there. That's a good analogy. I like that cool off. Let that area cool off. You're, two, you're, you're a two-sided guy, Pat, and you saw John just put him on the right for this bird. That would be your first instinct? Well, did you see the first, uh, it was our first dog. He went at, he pushed him in the water, and the dog went back to the, was headed to the point where the water blind you know, yeah. poison bird was. Sometimes these things, I can't worry about the water. I let the dog worry about the water. I gotta worry about the mark. Right. So I ignore the water. Yeah. That's what I would do. So I guess to answer your question. Depends on the dog, like we've been saying. I might, week. well, <laughs> if I ran off the right, I would definitely influence to the holding blind, identify the holding blind and, put, and push out to the bird. I wouldn't worry about trying to get him more water. More water. Right, that's a good, I like that. So, I would probably run it off the right, but I would, I would make still sure I kind of under got, the arc. Right. Oh, to me, it's always the safest deal. And there's something you can eat. a good eat. spot. Yeah, it is. Now, you, you hope to get a little, well, he's got a tail crack in there a little bit. Well. Nice job. Got a good run going so far. Yeah, that's the first, well, first dog to get the first, the two, Short birds clean. Yep. John's definitely got to be pleased with this run so far. So if I'm 18, 20 dogs down, I'm going to look real hard to see how well they're coming up with this left bird. If I think I can get it easier last, I might really, if you want to hit home run, I might attack that long bird second. I don't know. But I think you can get it. I think if you know if you're really bold, I think you can get it pretty good last based on what I've seen. You just don't just gotta make a good train decision when he comes over and sees that big bay of water. Now you've seen somebody get the first two birds really good, so you're gonna kinda be able to judge how they're gonna judge the long bird here. Yeah, very good point. I think that last dog and handler team and this dog and handler team the scores will let everybody else know how the judges are, are, are yeah. judging this test. Yeah. We're at 15 minutes right now on this dog. 
He's got a little bit of a, more of a laid back pace. Just trying to figure if they got a chance of finishing this today, but it, no, no chance. We had heard the judges say that if, if possible, we'd try to get through all 24 dogs, but if not, we'll, well, we'll get had through quite a bit of fog this morning. We'll there. Yeah, get the fog delay this morning hurt us a little bit. And, uh, you know, the judges have been so good about keeping everything fair, so right. they're not going to push it to keep it put in an unfair standpoint if they, had, if they can help it. Remember how this dog kind of angled? Well, I thought for a minute he was going to angle yeah. left there because he did it on the go bird. I'll tell you what, to do this bird well, you can't be afraid of that short bird. That's right. I mean, you've got to almost stick them over the top of it. Kind of like that first or the second series with that canopy. You couldn't be afraid of that canopy on the right. simulated flyer. you got to put them close to it. And you're going to see John take the early handle approach and try to make the swim. Okay, what I wouldn't mind if you're going to handle, you better handle, swim. get them over there now. There's, I think there's a little bit of water in this bit, so, in this little yeah, deal, little but cove, they come out of it really quick. Yeah. But they come out of it to the right. And then I believe there's another one on the other side between yeah. that point and the holding blind. Correct. But I'll tell you what, it takes a pretty disciplined dog to take that cast from that yeah. distance into that big body of water. So if you were handling and you blew that whistle, how aggressive are you going to be to get him over there? I mean, if you just, before he gets in the water. Um, you know, they didn't put a point value on actually missing the water, so you're going to accumulate offline and stuff like that. So you just got to have to decide on the point of, are you going to rack up more refusals than you would offline penalties or not? You know, so you have to kind of make that mental adjustment on how your dog's are working with you. I believe, you know, you're going to try your hardest, I think, to get him in the water, but if you think you're going to get 25 refusals to get there, then it may not be worth it. It's not the easiest handle for me. No, not at all. I mean, that's what I'm... Because there's so much area that you can't see the dog over there. So if you have a ha handle and then a big hunt. Isn't this, I mean, you either gotta buy into handling or buy into letting them find it without right, handling. Right. If you try to do handle a little bit and then let them hunt on top of it, does it doesn't that kill you? Well, yeah, we have a, there's a, in the rule book, there's a, there's a penalty um, called wandering. Um, and so if your dog is, if you're allowing your dog to hunt not in the area of the fall once you're handling most of the time, and there you're going to start occurring wandering penalties. And that can be based on area coverage or time coverage, um, kind of whatever the judge's discretion, they feel like the dog's at a wandering point where you should be taking control. So is the wandering judged differently after you've handled? No. So it's the same? Okay. Correct. Generally speaking, I mean, it, it always everything's always of judge discretion, but generally speaking, it's pretty close to the same. Looks like he's going to get over here and work it out. Yeah. I tell you what, you got to mark this bird. Yep. Yourself. Yeah. You got to know where this is to one handle. The handler needs to mark. Got her done. You know. Yeah. Got the two other birds clean and had a handle on the on the long bird with a bit of a hunt. So this is going to be kind of one that's going to be tough to read on your mm -hmm. judging. I think you're still going to play most of your your uh, strategy off of Henry's run. Well, we got Jay Paul back in the booth, so I'm going to step away here for a minute. It was good talking to you. Always appreciate your insights, Luke. We always love to hear from what uh, the handlers are thinking here. And Jay Paul's going to step back in. Yeah, guys, I stepped away. I wanted to kind of get a handle on what other people out here were thinking about this thing. And, you know, 
the general consensus that I got from everyone that I've spoken to is that they love the test. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely, definitely room to move, and there aren't going to be many dogs that just come out here and smash oh, no. this thing. I heard you guys discussing the over and under. What was the consensus there? I missed that. <laughs> well, I said, is the over under going to be ten dogs? Are are there going to be over or under 10 dogs that do this without any handle? And he said, oh, definitely under, and probably so. Yep. Oh, 24 dogs? Six. Six dogs do without handle? Six yeah. is over under. I don't know. I mean, you can That's do your over under. <laughs> That's where I would put it. I'm going to say oh, it's going to be over six. You're going to say over six. I'm going to say over under six. six. Okay. Do you stay in tonight? We're going to get a, a true we're... gambler. I'll say five and a half. Right? No, I'm just kidding. Over and under set at five and a half. Yeah, I should say that. We got then I'll take the six, right? <laughs> we got a beer on this? Is that what we're going to do? I believe so. Mm -hmm. All right, I like mm -hmm. it. You got it. We got to put some. We'll fill in all the viewers tomorrow to see who's right. <laughs> well, unless the line moves. <laughs> in my experience, the watermarks, the big watermarks, are the last thing to develop in a, in a dog. You can, you can teach a young dog to do a water blind, but to remember a 20 minute test. Mm -hmm. it, it either takes incredible talent or a lot of experience. This is this is going to be over 20, 22 minutes from shot to shot. So, getting a good uh, jib view there in the uh, holding blind of uh, Blaze with handler Mike Gibson, and through three series, Blaze and Mike have a score of two forty nine. Again, as Jay Paul and Luke had plenty of opportunity here to either move up or move down in the standings. Well, you know, you saw with Blaze in the last series, he gave up a little bit. But we also saw several dogs in the last series make some big, big moves. You know, a couple notable drops. Um, not picking on anyone, so please, this is not, it was just a numbers game. You know, Carol, Cato, Frank, you know, they had a, a pretty big drop. Uh, we had a couple other dogs that, I had some big moves along the way as well. We yeah. saw Shooter have a pretty good drop from second place. Mm -hmm. Bobby had a big move from 18th to 5th. I believe Clark had a big mover in there as well. So and that's what we're looking for here. You know, these judges have done a great job of providing tests. I'm not sure what's going on here. Oh, this is the delay here where they you reach gotcha. and grab you the come back in and do that. I tell you what, you watch the dog, the dog almost thinks it acts like it's a no bird. Yep. He says, Oh, okay, I guess we're not doing this. But these dogs practice these hybrid tests, right? You guys you certainly oh, I mean, you know you're gonna get it. I'll tell you what, I watched the test dog run and do this and then since then I'd almost forgotten about that. The light is the way that guess that he got up and the concern on the dog's face it made me really wonder, hey. Well this dog act like you saw it. Well, the last two handlers stood up to send, but I think it was probably because their dog got was a little uncertain. He just cut him loose. I think if you've got a handler who's unsure whether his dog saw it. Uh, particularly if he's not a hunt test guy, they're going to stand up to send them to make sure they give them that right line. You know, what did you say? S H E spine head. Up.
to you by you. Apologies for that. I'm watching so well think probably after I mean, there's room. Behind. Handle. Right now. I got this bird on the way back. Uh, up at the line while we were. We'll talk about their run, but then we'll also talk. Well, Carolyn Frank, you've had a really strong. I think a very had a little bit of an issue. Uh, did have a handle on the long right. Do a double take. Fast. Sworn run. Pat. Because. Same spot. It all. Other than that. Good last couple. three, really solid. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have 12 amateurs and 12 pros, unlike Series 3, where we ran all the amateurs first and then all the pros. What we're doing here in Series 4 is just running them in the order. So, for example, Carter Turner uh, went first because, obviously, currently in uh, 12th overall, but 24th, 12th overall in the uh, pro division, but, but 24th overall. So, essentially, if you think about it, if you look at the leaderboard, running down 24, 23, 22, etc. But those are obviously two separate divisions, 12 apiece. Uh, and then we'll cut it to... Come in here and do it. Pat, what are you seeing here? Three this identical, almost identical lines. This handler likes to handle significantly quicker, but he's not getting the cast. No. I mean, I'm, I'm getting pumped up here because I'll tell you what. If I was coaching my handlers, I'd say if you buy into handling, you treat it like a water blind from right there. I would. If, either let it play out, and let them, or if you, and I mean, I would. And when I see men treat like a water bind, I'd, I'd do the, everything I could do to get them left of the holding one. But they do come up with the bird quicker if you put them over that, this way, but somebody's going to come up and make this look really pretty. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see some scores here soon? You know, typically they take five dogs, let them run, and then they take a look at establish their baseline. They want to make sure that they're scoring consistently, and these guys have been excellent at that. So, yeah, I expect that we're going to see some scores pretty quick here. And as Luke was telling us a few minutes ago, I think the measuring stick of how the judges are judging this test would probably be Henry's run. So I think a lot of people will look at that because picked up the first two clean and then the far right one accumulated some points. How many? We'll see. 
we've had three dogs almost identical. Mm -hmm. The handlers just chose to handle it three different ways. But the dogs were almost almost in the same spot on the right hand bird. If you're gonna hit this bird, you can't be afraid of that middle bird. You gotta dare him to go back or into it. But you gotta have you gotta have the you know, you gotta have the training and the communication to punch him past it. But you know you, I was kind of surprised, too, because Steve is very, very, very methodical. And, I mean, he didn't just casually kick Dre off by any Oh, no, means. he did. But I, I'm not sure that he really spent the time he needed to to talk him into it. Okay. You see the, two, the dark spots to the left of the dog on the other shore? Yep. And there's two of them. Mm -hmm. If you're going to hit that bird, you need to get out to the left of the left one. Think anybody will approach it that way? Yes, I do. Because I've seen. I think there's a lot of guys here to win this, mm -hmm. and this is your chance to make a statement. I would think. It's definitely interesting to see who plays it conservative and who swings for the fences, right? Mm-hmm. And this isn't the last series. Either, no. Though. I'll tell you what we are doing. We're making up some time on this. My initial nope, dog to dog is now is actually under t is ten minutes or under. Jason yeah, Flasseter step into the line now with cash. Certainly picked up the pace in the last few dogs. Not sure, but I think this is our seventh or eighth dog to come along. I believe it's our seventh. So I would expect scores pretty quickly. It is indeed our seventh. Mm -hmm. Mississippi Public Education paid off for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not seated on the screen, but Howdy, Todd. I think some dogs are only really going to see the arm motion of the throat. The birds, the flasher, you can see some white. saw a handler switch gun hands and as Luke was talking about that it makes it where the dog only has to move their head not reposition their whole body but Jason right there chose to shoot both of those with his right hand I think you'll mainly see pros do that a few amateurs do it but the pros is really common I do that all the time I switch hands anything that we can do to not promote head swinging and yeah that's what Luke was talking about yep. watched him do it as well just slipping the butt of that gun around you're not getting nearly the swing A lot of people talk about using the gun to push and pull their dog. If all you're ever going to do is hunt your dog or run HRC hunt tests, hey, having a dog that swings with a gun is great. But I can tell you from personal experience, I used to teach dogs to really move broadly with the gun. It bites you in the tail here. So. And as long as guys have been training retrievers at a high level like this, I think I can tell you, we've all been looking for ways to minimize head sweep. Oh yeah. yeah. Something else has come into mind if I'm think if I'm two or three dogs down. I might stand up if the dog really saw that middle bird. I might stand up and try to push him a little more at the gun to give them a little more comfort zone to get a better line on the long bird. Sometimes if you if you, if you can create some differentiation between those lines, you can you can talk them into going tighter to that left bird if you didn't come at it from the right. I don't know if that makes sense, but oftentimes the line to that middle bird, if you're really comfortable your dog saw it, I think you could stand up and point a little more where the gun is 
and it might help you get a little better line on the right bird. Take a note of our current conditions so that as the afternoon goes on, we can see how they can change and then impact the test. Currently, 82 degrees with a seven mile per hour wind blowing north to south. We'll keep an eye on that through the afternoon because certainly that can impact and change this test dramatically. get some time to think about all right what's my strategy here Jason and Cash had a 44 in the first series a 67 in the second series and a 127 in the third series so we're coming in here to the fourth series with a three series total of 238 be interested to know the dogs that really hit the second series hard because this bird here has got some similarity mm -hmm. to the long bird in the, in the second series okay here's somebody oh you got a little bit afraid he had a little too left push let's see if, and if you want to get that line you gotta you're gonna have to close the door he's there's the first guy that's kind of uh, if you take a look at our facebook page too you can see some of those scores coming up there Interesting, gentlemen. Felt like he was trying to push harder than some of the others, but he's, well. I really do think he was trying to push hard. We have posted scores for our first six dogs, the judges. Have, we have posted scores for our first six dogs on Facebook, the judges have turned them in. I do think he was trying hard to well, really push there. And we're going to take a look at those here in a moment. We're going to let Cash and Jason finish done. this run. And then we'll be bringing you some scores. He's coming out just to the right of the holding blind, but he's got another piece of water to punch. Now, we're taking a look on the drone footage. There's that little piece of spittle laying there to the yeah. right. If he doesn't square up to go over to it, this dog's going to be in really good shape. He's going to come up just, I mean, he's just behind the, the holding vine. Just, yeah, I'll tell you what, he's... There's, there's two without a handle. I tell you what, I may be buying you a beer. You may win it oh, on the over. I told you I can taste it now. I just got to decide <laughs> what, which one I'm going with. How does this? All right, here we go. We've got some scores popping up. And Joe First and Carter time. there with a 72 for a 352. Yep. Ooh. We also have Henry and John put up a 73 here in Series Four. Uh, Dre and uh, Stephen with a 73. <laughs> 71, apologies, Frank and Carol with a 57, Blaze and Mike with a 27. Anything there stand out, anything lower than you expected, higher than you expected? Well, one thing that catches me is that Carol was able to make a little bit of a move there. Thanks to that, she leaped over uh, Stephen and Dre, it looks like, picking up 14 points on them. So she was a couple points behind, now she's ahead of them. The thing that stands out to me is that 27, that is a going to be a tough score to beat here in these amateurs. We just saw another dog pick it up clean. I'm sure that 
Jason and Cash are going to have a really good score. But remember, you've only got to come out ahead of six. And right now, Mike and Blaze, they've made up some ground. Yeah, they are uh, have four that they're ahead of already in the amateur division. They only need a couple more to stump, stub their toe, and they're going to make it into the finals, which for Mike has become almost a tradition. What do you think about this, Pat? I think you got your answer whether you're going to let him hunt or handle. I mean, that's obvious. I mean, uh, the 57 and the 27 were identical, except one person decided to handle, the other person decided to let it play out. They rewarded the dog that found the bird without handling, even though he had a bigger hunt. And I think you're going to see it here, too. So, be interesting to talk to Carol here in a little bit and kind of pick her brain about what she was thinking about there, because that time, it definitely cost right. her 20, 30 points in there. I think when you come across and you see these scores, part of the um, disadvantage of running in the first five dogs is you don't get to see how they're judging it. And sometimes as a handler, you can take in that big piece of water more into account than, than the judges might, you know. And so you may be thinking they're going to judge the line harder than they are the actual mark itself. And it seems to be that they're trying to reward the marking dog. Yeah, I've got to totally agree with you, Luke. And I'll also point something else out. That's why when we go to our finals, they do not give any scores until every single dog is run because you don't want to give anyone an advantage there. And there is a little bit of an advantage or disadvantage in this case, as Luke was wisely pointing out. And having to run in those first five dogs, you don't have the luxury of trying to figure out how the judges are going to judge it before you come to the line. But this is consistent with how they judge the second series. They, they rewarded some of the, a lot of those dogs that, that had hunts but were smart about figuring it out. So I think it's pretty consistent with the pattern of how they've interpreted some of those bigger hunts, but dogs that had the wherewithal to figure it out. We've already seen John Lamar run with Pine. Here's John with his other dog, Katie. Yeah, John has three dogs here. Correct. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Also, Smokey. Tell you, Smokey's been a tough one in the amateur the last couple of years as well. Boy, something, something went wrong there. He, the dog just didn't see something. Right. We see a score pop up there on the screen. Cash and Jason Flasseter with a 20. I think the difference there was there is a line that Cash didn't cross on this right hand bird. They're probably knocking him five points to get that odd score there, that 27. And, you know, by staying within that. Yeah, it was, just, it was, it was yeah. significantly better, but it was a little bit better than the other one. Yeah, a little bit better. They're leaving, you know, they're leaving room to reward the dog that does it absolutely perfect. Yeah, you're talking about the difference there between the 20 and the 27. On the right hand bird, there's obviously some boundary there that they've picked out that they're giving you five points if you get to the right of that. And then Blaze had a little bit of a hunt on one of these marks that Cash came in there and cleaned up much quicker and two more points there. Just tells me the importance of getting these first two birds clean. Hey, Amen. What do you think about the body language, the way oh, well, Katie's swimming here, kind of like when, an alligator down in there? Yeah, when their butts up floating up, and they're just nervous. They don't know where they're going, yeah. and this dog's just something. There was some sort of miscue on the line. The dog didn't, must not have seen that bird, because it went for the left bird, and is just uh, really insecure about what's going on here. We have a pop there. Yeah, I heard a back, but didn't see a cast. Yeah, and then the dog was going to maybe just go get in the water and. Yeah, Katie just looks a little bit nervous and unsettled yeah. to me, Pat. They just weren't on the same page there. 
That happens sometimes. It's deflating, you know. You got this big plan. How am I going to do that third bird? And, and it, ha I can't tell you how many times it's happened to me. Well, what you're hoping there is that the dog really picks up its attitude and starts to gain confidence and growth. Well, I'm, I'm, this dog's going to be a, more comfortable in these next two sure. sims. <clears throat> you know, two things that I've seen over the years in dogs, and we've seen both of them today, that when you look at their body language, and neither of them are really good. Earlier today, we saw a dog on that poison bird blind, you know, standing up in the water on its hind feet, front feet, off of up out of the mud trying to get up as high as it possibly could all eager looking at that poison bird. Oh, I know. You know, that's some exuberance that you know is not going to turn out good. And then, you know, when you see one going in the water with the head low, the hind end really, really high, that's just the opposite. You know, I'm really concerned about things. I'll tell you what, I would really encourage new people at home to watch what went on in that water blind. It's a... There's an unbelievable amount of information available that went on there. Not just handler, but reading dog behavior and reading signs and what happened. It, uh, I don't know where you would ever get that information other than in this venue. It's like the old, you make the call in the NFL, remember that? On, you could do that. What a learning opportunity. Like, when are you going to blow? What cast are you going to give? I just... You've got multiple hours of video that because you're going to be in that situation someday. You're going to have to make those same decisions and, and tell you there was some great handling that went on there. Well, and to have insights from you and Jay Paul and Luke that sometimes are the same and sometimes are different, it gives them the different perspectives to consider as well as they're not only watching but listening, going, oh, okay, good point. I, I'll jot that one down. Yeah. I can tell you many times, Mike Lardy, myself, Ray Bo, all three of us <clears throat> talking about something, Similar styles, three different opinions. <laughs> and that's healthy. This bird has turned out to be a little more routine than it looked like in the beginning. I don't know what we've got going on over here, but on the long right hand bird, the bird boy would come out for something. Thank goodness they've got him back. We don't want any interference in the test. Just send him back. Dog had no idea what's going on. We just we caught that. I'm sure they're on the radio to him to help talk him to get settled in. Yep, definitely saw the marshals telling him to get seated and settled back in before they send on that long right bird. Pretty good advertisement for your boat right there, buddy. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Got to give the producers here. Do you pay extra for that spot? Yeah. They do a wonderful job showing love to the sponsors of this event. Of course, we sponsor the event because we love it. Hey, pay attention with the amount of daylight between the dog's head and the handler's the more, the more, you, the less daylight. The more you're closing the door and influencing t to the left. 80. But when you see daylight there, well, see. now it's hard to tell. What, uh, and they get too worried. They just swim up the middle of the lake. But this dog just never got. He's been off on the wrong foot the whole time. Just confusion started with the first scent, and it's blood over into this bird as well. As a handler, when you notice a run's not going well from the first bird, what goes through your mind? Damage control. What can I do to... I mean, I just got to make it the best I can. Mm -hmm. What information can I provide to try to salvage what's going on? I'll tell you what's going through my mind is you don't quit. You want to complete this? Jimmy V, never give up. Amen. Or the frog in the crane. All right. You know, and the dog's got to, even if you know, it doesn't pay off here, the dog's got to learn that, you know what, we're going to finish this. Because sometimes they feel like quitting, too. 
and that's not a good pattern to start. So here's okay, what's interesting. I wish I could see what the dog can see. When does when do you think he sees the water? Is it right about there? there? Or maybe there. You, you you know he sees it there, and and. All right, I'm curious to see when we see him. So, that little piece of land on there, there's water between there and that. That's that point. It's actually we're a channel at. that comes all the there's way. There's a channel this side see. of it. Obviously, it's it's a wider channel the further left you are, like where this dog is. You know, that surprised me a little bit there, and I'd like to hear your take on this, guys. Pat, Luke, it's handlers. I saw with Katie when she was really, really confused and he kicked her off on that bird. She went to rely on her training. I think she would have taken the center of the lake all the way to the other side if he'd let her roll. Based on that, I was kind of expecting her, once she got lined out, to get back in the water. To get back in the yeah, water. Yeah. What, what do you think happened? Yeah. I mean, for all practical purposes at that point, it's a water bun, and that would be a hard water bun. That's a long entry. Just because she decided to take water in the beginning didn't mean she'd take it there, though, really. But I did wonder, because she had a pace like, I want to stay out of trouble. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is really going south for this dog and handler team. Getting a little information where they maybe wind or see the bird now. I think she's as happy to see the bird as <laughs> she said, Thank God, and I found it. I made the comment earlier, I believe wholeheartedly that we'll let that four wheeler get out of the way. that at, at the highest level, the big watermarks are the last thing the dogs put together. And this is certainly big watermarks. In my experience, you know, you can get a two, three-year-old dog to do a lot of the other behaviors, but watermarks take time. Or an unbelievably talented dog, but there's just, it's not just marking, it's just the, the experience of seeing so many different things. It just, and sometimes with, it's, it feels like it's never going to happen. You know, you go through that stretch of a transition dog that's maybe two and a half to three. You may go a year, year and a half without noticing any real advancement on, the, on this. You just got to stay the course. And then sometimes the light bulb just goes on and they start to get it and they start to believe. And bingo. And you see them start to put letters in front of the back of their names. <laughs> That's been amazing to me over the years, how many dogs that we've had in our community and in our program, that they come in and for whatever reason they, they lack confidence or their skill set that just was not developed and we struggle, we struggle, but we continue to believe in them and work with them and then all of a sudden one day that, you know, that maturation happens and it's almost like a light switch gets flicked and, you know, you see it in kids coaching over the years. Well, exactly. Yeah. It's dogs. Sometimes it takes them a little while. It's super rewarding when you get a dog like that and you work with that dog and work with it and you show that patience to that animal and then you're rewarded by having it come around and, you know, really put in the work. And you don't see many rookie NFL quarterbacks. No. The ones you do don't normally perform as well as the guys that have been around six, seven right, years. Right, exactly. It's a very good analogy for sure. 
And I can tell you, the ones that do, they all have something in common besides talent. We'll come that way after the next dog. An incredible work ethic. Mm -hmm. They all do. And there are two handlers here that, you know, when I look at them, young guys, I think about that. You know, um, you see some of these young guys come up, like Carter here, yeah. shows up on the scene, and just as, you know, We got a little been re super re successful, going on. and you know that that comes from yeah. real hard work, dedication, and determination. Of course, Luke's that way. I'm sure he's kind of embarrassed to hear us say that right now, but it's a fact. I mean, you come in here, we've seen it over and over again. Stephen Durance, I can remember him as a very young man coming in here, and boy, he had a work ethic and he had a determination. And we see Katie and John Lamar, the 129. It's not going to help them pick up any ground, fortunately. You were talking about Carter. I mean, Carter taking first, second, and third in the uh, You Can Do But Team of the Year. So the Triple Crown with Shooter, Cappy, and Smack. A really impressive year there for Carter. And I'll tell you, Cappy's looking really impressive. Cappy has a commanding lead here going into the semifinals in the Open Division. Coming to the line now, we have Lane and Georgia. Lane working with Georgia gear. Take a good look out there. Lane and Georgia posted a 79 in the first series, a 12 in the second series, and a 136 in the third. So second series, a field trial, this also. So could be an opportunity for Georgia and Lane to maybe move up here a little bit. You can see the dog say, well, now what's going on now? In these four series, we've seen a little bit of everything. We had an AKC hunt test in the first series. Mm -hmm. We had AKC field trial set up in the second. We had a very, very good hunt savvy scenario in the third. And now we have a true hybrid, meaning that it's a combination field trial and hunt test. On the field trial aspect of it, you've got a bird that you can walk up there and point out to the dog. Interesting. It looks like he's. I thought I was trying to primary select the left-hand bird at first. What'd you think, Pat? Yeah, kind of look, look back. Hmm. And I say, hmm, because it's just interesting to see the handlers that decide to stand up and send. Did you sense that dog didn't see that middle bird on the side? You did? Okay. Oh. Well, I kind of thought I didn't either. I thought that he was going to... Well, you said he looked oh. back at the left bird. You you read that just right, yeah. right? I thought in that circumstance that Lane would probably primarily select the left-hand bird. I can tell you, I would have definitely, if I knew my dog did not see that middle bird, I'm going to primarily select but they, the left they bird. But they said you so. have to pick up the middle bird. They designated the middle bird. You have they to pick it up. They designated it as a go bird. Because you don't have that discussion. choice. Yeah. Thank you for that. I need to wake up when I come to these things. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're like me. you got a good memory. It's just short. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you hate handling on that go bird. Darn it. seeing some total scores here through the first four series scrolling there at the bottom of your screen if you didn't have a pen and paper handy we can read those out to you keep you updated throughout the day so I didn't watch real close is Mike the lowest score at this point no Cash no. and Jason. Cash and Jason are oh, okay. Mike and, and Blaze with a 276, but Cash and Jason with a 258 currently. Oh, okay. I think we're going to let it scroll again. I'll tell you what, Pat, you made me feel good about myself. I'm not the only one that's missed something today. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do as a handler when you, when you sense that? Is there something you can do? 
to talk your dog and relax him to get in and get that bird when he doesn't see it. I mean, it, are you, are you going to try to point more at the gun? But the more you sweat and the more you work on, the more you make them think maybe I'm doing a poison bird. I don't, you guys have any thoughts on that? For me, I think you're going to treat it kind of like a short retired. You want him to get in there and look in there and be comfortable yeah. looking in there and just talk the comfort into him. You're not necessarily trying to talk him into an exact spot. You're trying to talk him into a line and coming in there and getting comfortable. So you're looking for the dog to almost give you a sigh of relief before you kick him off rather than locking in and looking long or looking into a certain area. The, the comfort is going to be the most most common thing you're looking for because most guys are going to send the dog on their name because they want the dog to go out there and hunt. Oh, yeah. And then not, not be, turn into blind mode and line into that next piece of water or push off and try to go somewhere else. So I think it's going to be kind of how you would handle a short retired that's tied under a flyer or something like mm -hmm. that. It's going to put mm -hmm. a dog in a nervous situation. I'm not going to give the dog, I'm with Luke, I'm not going to give the dog an easy cue by any means. But I am going to be very relaxed with that. I'm going to take my time. I'm lining him up. I'm going to talk him into it. You know, if I get him to look there, good. That's it. Good. That's it. And then I'm going to kick the dog off on their name with a little bit of inflection, but not a lot. And hope that if I can get them lined up close enough to that holding blind, that they're going to get up there. And as you know, we've learned from you, they process information dog's going to get up there and start working out the scents and the mm -hmm, smells mm -hmm. and seeing the holding blind there and hey okay this is where i need to hunt he didn't send me on the back he didn't send me super hard most of these dogs are going to know they've got to get wet Come on. just being between the bird and the gun in a relaxed state of mind is all is all you can try to accomplish there but there's a key to be between the bird and the gun. If you get them too relaxed and they square hard right, they're not getting any information. And so maybe, you know, if you sense it, you got to point more at the gun, but then relax them before you send. So did the judges give any indication of why they were making that a designated go bird? They, you know, they were talking about doing some different variations and demanding that from the start. There was even talk of... You know, shooting them in different order, but designating they pick up the, this bird first. I, I guess I don't know for sure. My, my first instinct oh, on you reducing that as a as a designated go bird is going to be because when you look at these two memory birds that they have set up right now, you're looking for a dog to make decisions to come get that bird. And so when you, if you have the ability to point those and get them as a go bird or a single themselves. Um, you're kind of taking out what they're looking for as judges. They want to see a dog make a decision around the water and establish a hunt and figure it out. I would concur with that. There was no ah! way I would send for that right hand bird first, even if they looked over there. It's just nothing good's going to happen. No. What will happen sometimes, they'll retire when you send. So their dog gun's not going to be there when the dog comes out of the water. And then they're just going to get betwixt and between. So. The fact that they told you you have to get it first. I guess the only other option is if they just if they looked over here and got this bird first. That could, I could see where that could be. Well, I mean, I could tell you in a situation like that where the dog didn't see that middle bird, I wouldn't hesitate for a second primary select the left hand that bird. That left hand bird. And maybe they wanted to make it that way where hey, you know. And I tell you this too, I truly believe that that middle bird, if the dog didn't see it, it would be much easier to pick it up clean by primary selecting the left hand bird and then talking them into it by making them feel comfortable and not punching them off real hard because you know that dog has to be thinking when he wants me to go for that big long mark, he's going to lot of rocket under me to get me there. Yeah, this poor little dog, you see how she kind of came behind the line she said, I'm done here. You know, she... We had a couple of dogs that just didn't get started on the right foot. But we'll see. Maybe she'll uh, got nothing to lose now. He points. This is the this is the dog first dog that's been left of those dark spots. Watch this happens to me. She'll go out and stand on this bird. <laughs> and it just kills you. Lose. I think that's that dark spot we talked about. Mm -hmm. 
I can think of one other reason. Oh, yeah, this isn't. But you got to believe you can write. But when she's handled on two, the chance of her remembering that bird is next to none. Right, and you talked about damage control before. There's a, an old fall penalty that can be occurred. That's a 25-point penalty um, on top of that. So I think he's decided of seeing if she's going to push across the water, he's avoiding that old fall to keep her from getting any more penalties than necessary. She she wouldn't have. I mean, he had had to handle anyway. She, she, right. Where she was headed, she wasn't going to cross that water. Right, right. I can actually think of two other reasons why you could designate that. Okay, tell me. The first one we just saw right there. The dog picks that bird up first, comes back and picks the left one up second. There's a greater chance that it might return to that old fall. You pick up the left bird first, that bird second, very little chance the dog's going to return. You've got a better chance also of getting the long right-hand bird. That's one of the two. Well, I mentioned earlier, I mean, and I don't, you know, I'm not necessarily saying I do it. I got a little bit of gunner sticking out of that holding line. See it? Sure, if the marshals catch that, they're going to yeah. move him back in. You may not just see it on the camera. Uh, what you're describing is, is I tell you, if anybody's going to consider doing it from what I've seen, Lyle's the guy that might go for that right bird second. He did it in the first, in the second series. Or the left bird first. I could see well, Lyle primary second. Yeah, but you can't get the left bird You can't do that. You have to go. Not I said I, if they would let them yeah. right. do it. That's what I'm talking about. But I think what Pat's saying is after getting the go bird, Pat thinks he's going to go sure, I get that long one first before going. He tried different. that in the second. It didn't work out for him very well. But he, and I even talked to him afterwards, he said that's the way to do it. He was committed until it didn't turn out that way. But if anybody's going to try it, he's going to try it. Well, I can tell you another reason also possibly for the judges making that a mandatory go bird. The dog's just had a really good swim. The dog really wants to go hard on that second bird. I think it increases the likelihood of running around that bank. Which, you know, we were talking earlier today, at the beginning of this test, uh, before you came back and were able to join us back, David was asking me about the keys to this test, and I was telling that one of the keys to this test was making sure that you know your dog doesn't cheat that left hand mark because it is a long entry and it's a pretty sharp angle entry. Our dogs, I believe, are getting better. I know our training is getting better as well. You don't see that nearly to the degree that we used to, but yeah, we just saw this dog to skirt around that water. So Carol's dog took skinny water but got on the bird quick. I don't think it's that temp, even though it's just a corner, it just doesn't feel like that left bird dogs are gonna to wanna to cheat that much. You know, all the decoys, all the stuff, I mean, they may not swim to it, but I, yeah, I now, think the, the only reason I suppose is if they get skinny and cheat there, is that gonna set up a higher likelihood of them cheating on the long bird? Maybe. Oh, okay, so I, holding, think I think the holding blind started to fall down or something. So I was looking at it there. Probably the reason, either the wind or something. It, I think when you start getting into the comfort of, of, of getting that middle bird first, you know, the one thing you got to think about is these dogs just came off of running a poison bird double blind. So they mm -hmm. saw two marks and were pulled off. So sometimes you might see this when the handler stands up next to the dog to line them up, they're going to get into blind mode a little bit. So it might take the handler a little bit to talk them into. Hey, you're mm -hmm. going for a mark. You're all right. You know, you're going to talk them into there a little bit easy. So the dogs might be a little bit more cautious than they normally would, given that they ran a double poison bird land blind or double double poison right. bird blind double blind a couple hours ago. And listen, we're looking at a different angle. The person sitting next to them are looking into their eyes, and they know the dog. That's right. Well, okay. So now you start. You start. This is where you're really starting to look at your scores for your strategy. In the at least in the amateur division, right? I think I think in all divisions, you know, you've seen you've seen the dogs do it in every way possible. I think you've seen everybody handle on a different bird, and I think you're going to start really see people kind of grab grasp of the bearings of how they're judging and what the judges want to see in this test, and you're going to start seeing people play this these marks in a similar fashion.
as Pat said, taking a moment there to uh, fix that blind out there. So, brief break in the action here. Next to the line, though, will be Huck and Brian Broussard uh, when we come back. And uh, through three series, a score at 222. Jay Poe, like you said, if you're at this point in the competition, you know that you only have to basically beat six others because top six move on. So as these handlers finish their run, how close of attention are they paying to the scores of the others and kind of drawing the line going, okay, I'm either a header behind that guy, a header behind that guy, and knowing if they made the cut or not. Oh, I guarantee you, back over there at the truck, she's got Kendra Durance with the scoreboard. She's lining them up in order that they're coming in and setting the ordinal. These guys, they're 100% back there looking at the cut. It's going to affect them when they come to the line. We see Katie and John Lamar threw up a 203 there. I'm sure he's not very happy with that. But again, he came in here with three dogs. He's still got Smokey left. All right, I'm t being told that that score was incorrect. Yeah, I had for Katie and John Lamar 129. That was for Lane. I think that was for Lane in Georgia. The graphic was incorrect there. That is. That's correct. That would give anybody a heart attack. There's a Katie and Lamar, 129. Lane in Georgia, I believe, had a 203. Just said, we'll know for sure in just a minute. But going back to what we were saying, David, yeah, these guys, they're sitting back there, they're taking a look. And at this point, and I'd like for Luke to chime in too if he'd like, but in my experience at this point, this is the semifinals, not the finals. So these guys, they're looking at those scores, they're trying to figure out one. What do I got to do to make it to the next six? Because you can't win the championship if you're not in the finals. Sure enough, we see Georgia and Lane, 203. Number two, how can I put myself in the best position? Would you agree with that? Yeah, I agree 100%. You're trying to figure out right now is if when it's your time to line, do you have the opportunity to lay up or do you have to roll the dice and go for it? So with that 203, Georgia and Lane now have 430 through four series. And then tomorrow it'll flip. Once you make it that six, we don't get the scores, but it doesn't matter because nobody's thinking about laying up tomorrow. Everybody's going for the green. That's right. Trying to get that hole in You one. see, Brian, you see the handlers stand up to watch that first mark. So this is a hybrid test. They can point out the white coat in the field just like they were in a field trial. But once they sit down and bring the gun out, it becomes a hunt test scenario. So they're no longer allowed to point out the, the stations in the field, and the dog has to work with them to see the guns throw the birds by swinging off the gun. And I love that aspect of this game as well because it again shows the versatility dog that could absolutely switch gears. Man, I think Huck got a good look at that one. Good look at the left when he looked back at it. Huck definitely looked confident right there that he saw this. I think Huck saw the longbird too though. Did he give you any indication? Look that way to me. I think he saw. I think he definitely saw the the first bird and the left bird. I don't know that he saw the middle bird. Uh, because uh, generally Brian would probably. I would think that Brian would send from his side if Huck saw the middle bird. Gotcha. Being a grand guy and an HRC guy, his dog's probably most comfortable being sent as soon as the bird hits the ground. So earlier Pat was talking out of those two kind of dark spots right there. Everybody was sending their dog to the right of that. This is the second dog in a row that went kind of to the left of those two dark spots. I think those two dark spots, Platt's coming, talking about coming into play on the Longbird. Oh, now it'll be very interesting to see if the wind helps him out here at all. I'll just need a little help. Help me get my tent out of the car. I can put this over the hole. Where to put my tent over us? Here, I got water, sir. You guys need more water? Jay Paul and David, we're going to leave leave it to y'all. We're going to move the shade a little bit. You got it? I do. Are you guys doing it?
Now I'm finished uh, yeah, at 223, the sixth now. So uh, I'm just watch uh, uh, there, pick up the and I middle bar. He didn't stop it. A little bit of discussion was like, on that, whether or not I saw that or not. I felt like I really saw it. But I started. Yeah, we Huck certainly didn't catch exactly. much of the yeah, water. Well, I'm going to do the math here in a minute and actually say that. Yeah. Hey, this has been a pretty interesting run, David. Yeah, we saw the dog come out. Didn't feel like he saw the middle bird, but didn't have a lot of, had a pretty good hunt, but managed to clean it up okay. Left hand mark, we watched Huck really cheat the water, but came and still picked the bird up clean, and now. And the left one he saw pretty well. I'd say he saw it good, went right to it. Now we're watching him handle. When he kicked him off, I knew it was a little bit right, but I really thought that. Huck had an idea where this bird was, and he has made the fall area. Looks like he scooped up the bird. You had a pretty nice run there for, for Huck and Bright. You know, it started out us wondering whether he'd seen that bird and how it was going to turn out. A lot of times you feel like the dog doesn't see the first bird, and Huck put on quite a bit of a hunt, but, you know, Two marks on the outside weren't perfect, obviously handled on the right bird, but it was pretty quick clean handles, left bird. I'm sure he wishes he'd picked up a little bit more of the water, but it's gonna be interesting to see what Huck's score is here. I think we'll get a really good idea of how he's going to be penalized for not taking that water on the left hand here because you know, it's a pretty quick, quick handle. Maybe not quite as good as Carol and Frank earlier, but similar on the right-hand bird. Well, that was a quicker run than some of the other ones we've seen, obviously different dogs, different swim speed, different run speed, etc. cetera. Um, but so far we're averaging about 10 minutes per test, so, uh, or per dog here in this test. So uh, making good headway through our 24 competitors uh, here today, hoping to get them all in. It looks like we might based on the fact that it's only taken about you know 10 minutes per dog to run this test, but uh, definitely a good run for these two for sure. Yeah, definitely a lot of concern on our part when we started out the first couple of dogs close to 20 minutes each, but we're seeing the times come down quickly and, you know, we're going to get into dogs that are running stronger. I don't use the word better dogs because you got to be great to be here to begin with, but every dog has his day. We all know that and everybody peaks at different times. I mean, we've seen dogs, you know, look at Ron Anderson Rip, perfect example. They were just a little bit off peak performance, still great dog. Some of these dogs coming down to the wire here are dogs that are really on top of the game. They're peaking right now. We may see the pace of this test pick up even a little bit more. Well, to build on that too, you said every dog has his day. To be the Super Retriever Series Crown Champion, a dog has to have five good days. <laughs> That's right. With the level of competition his day. Right. His day better last more than 24 hours, that's for sure. Got Justin coming to the line here. Justin taking his time, making sure this dog really looks out there, of course. Justin, Justin, another one of our competitors that still has multiple dogs in the field. And field trial experience, which is right up his alley here this morning. Man, he looked away fast to the left. Mm -hmm. You did see something smart there. Justin actually stepped forward and 
brought him back in and showed him those guns again before they retired. And he took a good look at him then, and now he's looking back out there. Now we have Justin Herter in chief. Um, when, when you think of a hybrid test and you think of a hybrid dog, this is probably the dog that comes to mind for most, most people because he's the hybrid title. He's a field champion and a grand hunting retriever champion, so he's got the titles at the highest, at the high level to, to compete with that longbird and the swinging with the gun. So these dogs that are up, when you think of a dog to run a hybrid, this is probably the dog that comes to mind for most people. And I'll tell you, you can see that also. Justin stood up. He was really, really looking. He got him to look back out there at that gun station again. And uh, huh. Justin and me got him to look out there and lock onto it. Oh, no bad bird. break here. We've got no bird on the go bird. <laughs> so now, is that a bad break, or do you do you like having another shot to look at that long bird? I never, I, I never mind the no bird on one. That's right. <laughs> More chances you get to point it out. Well, there was something that I observed there too, with this dog. So Justin steps up, takes a good look out there. The dog looks at it. As soon as that bird hit, not sure if he saw it because he's kind of looked to the left. So one, maybe he didn't see it. Two, Justin did something I thought was really, really smart. He stepped back up, dropped his head back down while he was still in the field draw mode portion of it. And he came to look out there at that gun and that dog gave it a good hard look. David and I were standing there watching. He locked in on it. But then because the dog does have hunt test experience, when he picked up that gun, he got ready. Switch gears. He switched gears. He changed the hunt test mode. All right, so. We might have to split up again here in a little bit and go over there because you're right. We're all kind of sitting here together right now, but the perspective we had over to the left, we can see a much better view i mean obviously we have a great view here with the cameras but we were able to jay paul's point to see that, it, that initially we don't think that uh, the dog saw that long bird at all he kind of whipped his head to the left at the exact inopportune moment if you will right. but he didn't do it then correct so i think this may have really worked to his advantage just then he was locked on it i would have all the confidence in the world if i'm looking at my dog and i see the demeanor that we just saw right there also the dog doesn't look nearly as excited when he picks up the gun right now. Yeah. He didn't just change gears directly into hunt test mode just then. So it may have been a break that's going to work mm -hmm. in Justin's favor. Luke, what do you think about that? Where did the no bird land? I think he just went straight up. I'm not going to hurt you. Well, he's excited now, though. But he's talking to him. He's saying, right there. <laughs> you see how Chief cool kind of loaded up right there and, and, and looked like he saw that bird. Huh? Chief kind of loaded up right there when before before Justin sent him, so it looked like he saw that bird pretty good. You, know, you need to learn your dog's body language when he tells you, I got it. They we all do. have different uh, little cues. We've noticed that, Jay Paul and I, before with Chief. When Chief's got it, Chief's almost in like a slingshot, ready to go. Like when Chief sees it, Chief's like, let me go, let me go, let me go. Some dogs will close their mouth, some dogs will hold their breath. They've all got their own little trick. Yeah, David's exactly right. You know, this dog's body language tells you a whole lot. We've been watching him for a while now, and he definitely can give you an indication. Now, what's he doing here? He saw that bird really, really good. But right now, you okay, know, he's the bird. bird's gotta be just a little that bit. That might have been a little product of the no bird. Mm -hmm. If it went straight up and down, but. He obviously if got that's his worst bird, he's going to be a happy guy walking off line. <laughs> if that's his worst bird, he's going to make up a bunch of ground exactly. right here in this series. For sure. All right. He's up. <laughs> I got to get him. He's going to call his pocket here. I got to I got to know. So tell me, Luke, how are you feeling when you're sitting up there? And you go from 
the field trial part of a hybrid test to the hunt test part and you see the dog switch gears. Does it make you happy or does it make you concerned? I think it, I think it makes you happy when you switch gears going to the hunt test because you're, when you're when you're seeing these shorter marks, these check down marks, you want, really want the dog to settle in and kind of be calm when they watch those birds. If they're real excited and, and lunging hard when they're looking at them, you might be a little worried about overrunning that bird. So. I'll tell you what, this is looking really, really good right here. There we go, that's another nice mark. He's stringing a great run together here. My money is on Chief to pick this up clean. Any takers? I'm not going to take that bet because I think I already owe you and Pat a beer. Or maybe you and I both owe him one. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. You know, all humans, all dogs, we're all different. Some dogs let you know a lot easier if they saw it or not. Some humans wear their emotions a lot more at the line than the others. And it's hard to read. You, sometimes you look up there and you're like, I don't know what this handler's thinking, or I don't know if that dog saw it. And sometimes you see a dog and you're like, yeah, he, he, he's going to nail that. He knows where it's at. Sometimes you see the handler and they're either confident or you can see their hand shaking and they're nervous. And it's just interesting to see the different way people uh, approach the line and the way different dogs approach the line. So I can remember one, one of my really good amateur handlers, John Russell, Hall of Fame, won a national. Cherokee Rose. Huh? Cherokee Rose. He'd be in that second holding blind right now. And I'd be like the third base coach. Hey! We'd start, we had hand signals to what to go for. I mean, we were like, and he'd even look over. It was fun. Well, there's the big send. Get, he's, I can't tell from this. Is he getting that? Him? Believe it or not, that still exists here at the SRS a lot. Well, ooh, look at this now, gentlemen. Is he going to make the? Uh, when does he see the water? When is it? Right. Ooh. I tell you what, though. Okay, the problem there is, mm. I guess, if they don't punch the water. Hmm. He went on. There's a little bump of a point on this shore that I bet you that dog kind of launched off of. There's another little, you can see it right here to the left. Looking at the drone. I, and now, I like that line. I think it's giving him some points, but I don't mind that line if my dog chooses to. Well, you kind of hope they. Look at that. Look at them kind of looking for a holding mark. You see the yeah. dog kind of swimming, going like, all right. I have to feel like if I'm running a dog here, based on the experience of all the trial and hunt test dogs I've had, and ran at this level. Once my dog gets over there on that levee, they're not going to continue on. They're going to put the hunt on, on top of that levee. Well, and I think where he's hitting it at, unless that dog just leaves the country to the left and goes over here to the old farmhouse to see if, what grandma's got for dinner, it's going to come back to the right. You think he's going to go to the right? Well, boy, he sure doesn't. He's not leaning right at the look. Wait a minute. I think we'll know within three steps of him making landfall if this is a good choice or a bad. Oh, yeah. You're going to see when he, as soon as he comes out of the water. He, he's going to... what you see with the binoculars there. He's going to find one of those holes. I guess, yeah, you're looking to see... Does, is he, you can see him look right, look left once or twice. Camera view shows you kind of where the bird is. Oh, there's a little bit of. If he could, what I'm saying, look to the right and see the, see the see the whole line. line. It's. Uh, it looks like he's cutting just. Nope, looking back right. Yeah, Pat, you're right. He's looking for something. Oh yeah. Yeah, he knows that that bird is over there. There's no doubt about it. He's not just swimming aimlessly. He's still in he's the water. He's line. looking. That's what they look for. 
He's looking to find it. God, I, I, I just don't think a dog is going to go left, but I don't know. And he gets out. Oh, 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 oh. Nope, he did go left. left, didn't he? But no, he's, he's not going to stay there. But yeah. it, ooh. Now, is there any? I'm trying to look at yeah. yeah, That's where we're hoping to see him, but he's, he's going to. There we go, guys. Ooh. <laughs> He's working just deep of it. You know what the bottom line is? They got to mark it. I hate it when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> but they just, I mean, at the end of the day, they got to they mark the bird. Oh, man. Yeah, he's still. He is working this out, guys. Well, he said thank you. Bam! All right, I got a question now, right now. Here's the, here's the question we all wonder. Is there any difference on a, that equal size hunt taking the water on the left versus being on the right, in your opinion? No, in my opinion, there's not. There's one thing that I'm concerned about, and one thing only. How the judges were scoring it when he was out of sight. Were they really tearing him up for wandering? Because we see that frequently at this level in the sport. The dog disappears is not necessarily a good thing. But what I if I'm judging this and I'm biased for the dog. Yeah, what do you what do you sure. judge? That's what I want to know. I kept seeing the dog pop up back there just he wouldn't stay deep. He would pop up and he worked it out. Mm -hmm. Much like we saw dogs work it out yeah. in that second series. You know, um, the one that comes to mind, just because it's the biggest hunt and he recovered, again, it's Legend and Bobby. And I'm not bringing Legend and Bobby into this because Bobby, Bobby and our partners. It's because Legend, in that second series, as you will call, he actually was the only dog that got behind the gun, mm -hmm. came out to the right, recovered worked it out and picked up that bird and you and I discussed it at that time we felt like he knew where the mark was he just had to work it out this dog same thing in yeah. my eyes if I'm judging well he knew it was across the lake he knew, he knew it was he knew it was near the shore he just and he didn't leave how the far country was he, to, you know, he worked his way into the bird I still think the most interesting thing and you sometimes you can't tell here again what the, John Strzok is the guy that tries to pinpoint right where the first hunt is and guesstimate the yardage from the fall. And that's how he judges one, because that's, he thinks that's what their, their initial mark is. And then combined with what they do after that. So is it different if it's 80 yards and 95 yards away? How far do you think he was away from that bird when he hit the bank? Oh, I think it was 40, 50 yards? Yeah, 60 at the outside, 40 yards, probably 40, 50, maybe 60 at the outside. And he turned left for a second, and then he immediately turned back to the right, and from there on he continued to work right. A little zigzag. Well, when you talked about this being a multifaceted dog, he showed all the multifaceted skills. That's right. He said, I've been here before. I can figure this out. I may not know right where it is, but I can find it. And he did. So, uh, Luke, I'm interested in hearing your opinion on this. My take first, you ask. No way that dog gets more than 20 points for that hunt because okay. it's much better than any handle you could have there to there. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking this dog's probably coming in with a score of 30 or under. Wow. Your thoughts? Um, you know, as much as we would like to say that we would we would want the, the lower score to be from a water because, you you know, in training we always say there's right. got to be a good side of a bird. Um, but I think you're still, it's almost going to be, like you said, the same. You know, the distance from the bird is going to be about the same on either right. side of the gun. And so he's going to get some, I think he will get some hunting out of the area, some wandering points. Um, you know, so I, th I think he'll definitely be, have a higher score than Blaze. Sure. Um, okay. but, but he's going to be in the, maybe in the lower spectrum of what we've seen from handles. Yeah. I mean, we've seen a 20 and a 27 from two dogs. They picked it up without a handle, but neither one of them had a hunt like this dog has. A 30 here wouldn't be out of the question for me at all. You start getting up above 40. I mean, kind of questioning that because you're penalizing the dog that found it and you're leaving room for a guy with a quick handle to the area to beat you there on a dog that maybe had no clue. My, t my opinion, yeah. 
you also got to remember he had a little bit of a hunt on the middle bird. Oh, um, yeah. He went under the arc and hunted. So I'm, I'm thinking Excellent in the 40 point. to 50s. Step into the line now, Lyle Steinman with Tigger. Another multifaceted dog, got some field trial titles in the Canadian field trial world, and he's also a master hunter. Lyle was telling us he's actually only had this dog for six or seven months. So, interesting to see how these two work together. Not sure what we're looking at there, guys. I, I know what we're looking at. We're looking, oh, yeah. at. we're looking at a picture from the water blind. But yeah, that was Clark Kennington on the water blind. Can I ask you guys a question? Got a no bird. No, he's, no, no, he's just he's being methodical. Do you have to take him out of the bucket, or can you put him in your pocket before you go up? You can put you can put him in your pocket when you go up there. You just can't load the gun until you're doing the hunt test portion of the test. Is there any value to the taking less time to get ready to go here? It just depends on the dog. You know, I think if you have a very high strung dog, you might not want the rattling of the bucket um, after you've watched, watched the mark, so you might grab him as soon as you get up there. I'm going to take him out of the bucket on my way every time. Hmm? I'm going to take way? him out of the bucket on my way every yeah, time. That, that's what I would say. Yeah, I would agree. If, if you could put him in your pocket and just grab the gun and load and not take your focus off the dog, it feels like it would be a more efficient route. 31 for Chief and Justin. Well, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. You were dead on. You were dead on. A good run. I'm definitely putting the pressure on the rest of the open dogs that are running. Yeah, and as we watch Tigger come out here, I'll tell you, the, the reason that I felt that way, I felt like it had to be under 40 because even if you give him, say, a 10 for the hunt on the middle bird, you maybe got a 2, right. you know, on the left bird. So, you know, put him up there 18 to 20, but you put him at 22 or above. It's the same as a handle, so I think that's a really fair score by the judges there. Came into the fourth series with 200, so 231 right now, setting the pace so far. Obviously, only our second open competitor to go. Ten more, nine if you count Lyle and uh, Tigger here at the line. So, uh, but definitely uh, Chief and, Jer and Justin there setting the tone with the 31. It's a really, really good place to be there. Hmm. What was that? Hmm, Pat. Watching this dog hunt this bird. I'm thinking, come on. He acts like he knows it's there. He's just not, not coming up with it. I tell you, Lyle is very, very patient in a situation like this. You're not going to see Lyle blow that whistle. Well, that dog's not leaving the area. It's just yeah. frustrating. You're thinking, come on. Just yeah, you're right it. there. He, just grab the bird. You know, there was, I don't think there was any risk of having to handle that. It's just... It's kind of like watching a dog hunt on a hen pheasant flyer, you know. It's just right there. Just look at it. I still hate those. Okay, Lyle's going left. That's got to be illegal. <laughs> He's not checking his notes. What's up with that? Luke, he had not... a pattern of pulling a notepad out, kind of like almost like a play, like a quarterback with a little armband before he set. There are a lot of little nuances that go with Lyle Steinman that are just a little bit out of the norm for most of the handlers. Well, you see different different uh, routines that people go through, whether you're pitchers, you watch all kinds of different stuff. Listen, it, stuff it's, it just kind of gets you in the zone. Pat, you can probably remember this. Mm. Is it going to get wet? I don't think so. Luke, you think they're hitting them very bad for shade, rather? Um, I don't think you're going to, you know, they didn't, they didn't, you know, the judges have to point out if it's going to be anything more than 10 points, um, you know, and so I think you're, you're not going to, I don't think it's risk worth risking a handle. Um, I think Lyle felt like with this dog that he's running, um, he had better option to go under the arc to, for the dog to get the information to come with that bird than trying to worry about the water. I'm betting it's a 10 point penalty though for missing it. Now, Pat, I think you're, you'll appreciate this as we're talking about, you know, just doing things a little bit different. Remember that old line from the Bellamy Brothers song, he's an old hippie? <laughs> he ain't wrong, he's just different. You can definitely be different without being wrong. I think I trained that dog. <laughs> hey, the big sin. Yeah. 
Is any dog going to come up over the hill, see the water, and decide they need to be in it? I don't know. So where do you think they see it at? Does he get a shot? Yeah, I think. It's almost impossible when they make that move to think they're going to break for the water. I think at this point the dog that's seen it and made the decision, we saw him avoid it on the left. So, Pat, you've just seen your dog, Tigger, here. You've seen Tigger avoid the water on the left. Probably going to do it here, too, isn't he? He probably is. Here's my question, though. It did, he looked like Lyle did anything to push the dog to the left. If you've seen him avoid it there on, on his left, when you come up with this right-hand bird, are you going to do a little bit of blocking and try to influence him? Well, they're definitely two different types of birds. Sometimes you go on that soft, no-hand send on the water, and it almost gives them license to cheat. I'm less likely to use the check down cues on watermarks than I am on land, just because it relaxes them a little bit too much sometimes. There he picked it up without a handle. Boy, that beer's gonna taste good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are we up to? Come on. I'm up to about five, four. We're gonna be four. Old. The official tally, if if you're buying his, we're at four, and, four. It, and it was over under a six. Six, okay. You said six or more. You said... I said six no, or less. You, he, he said, said six or less. You said... So I need yeah. to get seven. Yep. And six, we four. buy our, our own beers. <laughs> 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 All right. Hey, we got to have some fun here. The reason it tastes so good is because he's paying. I right? know, I know. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Thrill of victory and the... You know, deliciousness <laughs> of pettiness. That's why, that's why you're excited about it. Yeah. Generally, the best beer is a free beer. Make sure you make him take you to one of those Mexican joints where you get the 32 ounce one. I know. Big <laughs> or some Irish pub. Yeah. Yeah. Get the double pint. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Right there yet, though. But I... <laughs> now the question is, is it going to be over 10 that don't handle I think yeah. you're going to see a lot of people at the dog hunt based yeah. on what we're seeing with scores. I don't think you're going to see these people fret on that big water as we thought they would at the very beginning. I'm going to say 13 dogs do it without hammock. <coughs> that would be a good guess. Based on what I'm seeing so far. That's a big old dog there. That's a big old dog. A lot it looks air. like an old school dog. just came by and I said that's an old school dog looks like a one of those big big old Labradors from days past you, you see more at small athletic dogs really anymore yeah that's more of a dick buck type dog there yeah I'll tell you we just saw that huh? yeah man what a great loss dick, dick buck just passed I grew up near Chicago my dad loved dick buckus almost as much as he loved Gale Sayers. Yeah. Fun fact, I used to host the Dick Butkus Award show with Dick Butkus. Uh, his college roommate at Illinois is also the guy that founded Hooters Restaurant. So everyone knows Dick as this guy who's like this big bombastic guy, made a lot of money in the NFL. His best friend is a guy that made a lot of money and nobody knows who he is. So uh, <laughs> I think that guy actually lived a little better life. We'd go out and everyone's like, oh my God, it's Dick Butkus. And the guy sitting in the corner is the founder of Hooters. No one knows who he is. And I'm sitting there thinking, that dude's a millionaire, too, and none of y'all have any idea, right? Yeah. Taking a look here at Zeus and Carter Turner. This is uh, one of four dogs that Carter has, or maybe five. Losing huh? track here. Carter's got so many. Uh, Carter still has in the competition. We've already seen Joe go, and this is uh, Zeus. And we still, yeah, we still have a, a shooter. Too, yep. You could hear Carter say here when the dog and and Captain, of course. over to see the bird. Mm -hmm. now, he stood up. Talked him in there. We have Lyle Diamond and Tigger with a thirty five. All right.
So if I didn't know any better, I'd say some of these hunts resemble drag back hunts. I would totally agree with that as well, that yeah. 35. I mean, he had a bigger yeah. hunt on yeah. Figured it out pretty quick the now. middle bird, cheated it on the left-hand side. But got the long bird a little better than cheated. Yeah, I got the long bird, even though it was, even though it was a, a line, you know, that was not nearly as watery. I think it was a little bit better birds. These guys, their consistency in judging has been spot on. Got Mr. Tommy Harp sitting back here with us. He was just nodding, and he's judged this thing. So if anybody would know, well, we actually got two great SRS <laughs> Crown Champion judges. Yeah, you got to love that though. You know the consistency factor. Yeah. Two, and, and the other thing is, the couple decisions that they had made were always on the side of the dog. They gave the dog the benefit of the doubt, and that's. My favorite judges have always been that. Even if you don't agree with them, you can never. When they when they give the dog the benefit of the doubt, their heart's in the right place. I don't think Zeus saw that middle bird, and Carter took, did a good job of what we talked about earlier, is getting him and looking there and confidently and getting that dog to establish a hunt on that short bird without having any kind of nervous reaction. That was a good job. There's another big dog. Okay, here's another one that's gonna... Carter, with one of his early dogs, pulled harder and had to handle on this bird, so he probably was a little bit afraid to pull too hard, but... You've also got that wind shift kind of going right to left again, so I think Carter's thinking under the arc is a safer play rather than yeah. getting out fat. And I, and I, and I, if I was coaching clients, that's the kind of bird that I say, you worry about the bird, let the dog worry about the water. That's right. You, you got to just talk them into the mark. You're not doing a cheating thing. You're trying to get, you get, try to get too picky on that. You can talk them out of the bird. As he brings the bird back here, we'll go through all our Series 4 scores so far. So uh, Joe and Carter, 72 to give them a 352. Henry and John with a 73 to give them a 348. Pine and John Lamar with a 109 to give them a 367. Blaze and Mike Gibson with a 27 to give them a 276. Frank and Carol had a 57 to give them a 301. Dre and Steven with a 71 to give them a 313. Cash and Jason put up a 20. Sitting at 258 after four series. Katie and John Lamar, 129 for a four series total of 360. Georgia and Lane, 203 for 430. Huck and Brian posted a 62 for a, uh, I believe that's two. Let me double check that number. Apologies there. Chief and Justin, 31 for a 231. And then Tigger and Lyles, we just saw a 35 for a 238. And yeah, uh, Huck and Brian, 62 for a 284. Hmm. There's been an awful lot of similar work. Here, yeah. Really. Yeah. You're going to see a lot of the same reaction. Really the only test so far that we've seen that much similar. And I guess I say similar work, similar work in the dogs that have done the better jobs. Not extraordinary, but pretty good. Well, he got over there pretty quick. Pat, you were talking earlier about as the afternoon stretched on, the conditions may change. I checked in about an hour and 20 minutes ago, and we have an identical temperature and an identical mile per hour wind. So, only thing so, that's different is the angle of the sun. Absolutely. Which every it, the little, visibility every still little change, looks good. Every little change makes a difference in the mm -hmm. dogs. Well, the thing that would kill you is if we were looking to the to the west and that sun was going to set over those behind this bird, but that's not going to happen. Got it. Ooh. Okay. Another clean one.
Carter obviously happy with that. Yeah. I think you'd be getting different work, Pat, if you move if you threw the gun from the other side of the field towards the same spot. You're talking about the long bird, you mean? Throw from left to right? Yeah, put the put the, the retired gun over in that row of trees. Well, if you could hide the holding line better, I think those dogs wouldn't find that. I, I bet you when they get over that holding line's pretty obvious. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, it's sitting by itself. Um, Let me put it this way, if they were going to throw, they wanted to throw it further left, but there's a old dock or something in the water that they were worried about the dogs you know, oh, okay. get, getting up Table and would have thrown it near that right hand tree, then missing the water. We got some open scores that are significantly harder. Pardon me, Pat, if you need to speak over you, we've got some open scores that are popping up on the board here. Chief Carter started us off today, 72, now with a 352. We've seen Tigger and Lyle there with a 35 for a 238, and then Chief and Justin with a 31 for a 231. Also want to give a shout out to my buddy Rick Hunter at Volunteer Boats, Tennessee. He just let me know that uh, they're sitting there at the shop checking out the Super Retriever Series Crown Championship while he's trying to sell some Thor Lake hammers. So really appreciate a tease call Rick. He's my favorite dealer. Love Rick Hunter. Volunteer Boats, Tennessee. So appreciate you, Rick, letting us know that you're giving us your support. They got Rocky Top playing in the office or what? Oh, dude, Rick Hunter, you talk about diehard Tennessee fan. Baseball, basketball, football, it doesn't matter. If the big orange is playing, he's watching it. <laughs> uh, you, if, if old Smokey was running here, you could bet he'd probably be here watching he'd this be here thing. Watching live. So, right. yeah. I love it. Well, if you name your, uh, if you're in Tennessee and you name your dealership Volunteer Boats, you a pretty good guess you're a Tennessee fan. I tell you, if, if you don't enjoy watching this guy handle, there's something wrong with him. He's got just, and you know what, that, that fun energy that he has, he, these dogs show it too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Reminds me of a saying from my old buddy Jim Jimbo Ronquist, who was a judge here two years ago at the Crown here in Shreveport. If that don't light your fire, your wood's probably wet. I'll be done. That's a good way of putting it. Bird still showing up pretty darn good. Okay, Justin just had a great run a couple of minutes ago. 31. He's coming back now with Cash. Second dog he's got in the semifinals here. So how many have we ran now, guys? Tell you what, we got David, our unofficial scorekeeper here under the tent. Four, this will be the 14th dog. 14th dog, 10 to go. We might hey, make what? it through. I have a feeling we will. The, I mean, the big difference is if they would have swam to this long bird, the, the, the time would have been a lot longer. Only one dog has really done that, so. So there's a... They're going to finish this. Yeah, so that's what I'm good saying. For everybody. Barring something unforeseen happening, we're going to get done with the four series today. It, that means we'll have all day tomorrow to wrap up our final series. And I've got to tell you, I'm smiling about that time management that these judges have shown here. Mm -hmm. Zeus and Carter Turner at 33. So they're not giving up any ground. Gonna make it hard for some of these uh, higher pointed dogs to get in that top six, isn't it? Yeah, that 33. I mean, after four series, Zeus and Carter at 214. So, I believe that definitely was making it difficult for some of these that have put up a higher score today with with more faults to be able to try to move on to the finals.
didn't mean to step on your toes there, Jay Paul. I'll give you a Jim Nance toss to Vern Lundquist. We go to Jay Paul on 13. <laughs> I tell you what, Jay Paul's sitting here thinking right now. I think we've seen six pick it up clean, so we're about one dog away from getting here. Pat Burns, y'all, hey bartender tonight at my expense. <laughs> I don't know if y'all know that Jay Paul and I had a little little wager on an over under for dogs doing this without having to handle. And uh, we picked six as the over under. We can do double or nothing for. 10. <laughs> 12. 12. So they're 12 and I'm game. All right. I'm in. Pat's trying to leave the debit card in his hotel room tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. What's, this is interesting. He's definitely trying to make sure he gets water in this bird. Gonna get it. Okay, for a minute I thought he had a little wide look, but. Getting wet there. Looks a pretty good spot. But there's something to be said for if you get a little discipline on this bird, maybe you got a better chance of punching the water on the next one. I gotta tell you, I really have enjoyed this week, though, having Pat up here with us as well as Luke. Luke's done a wonderful job. He's just about as polished as a commentator as he oh. is as a handler, isn't he, Pat? My thought is that if you can quit your day job, you get something you can probably pull off. Amen. And I tell you, I, I, I've said this earlier, I had a great client, a guy said that in the department store life, this is the toy department. <laughs> running dogs and watching dogs. If you can't have fun in the toy department. Somebody said, what about David? Well, we all may know David is the quintessential professional, so it's always a pleasure to have David here. Oh, You're absolutely. just trying to get me to pick up the tab now. Come on now. All right, all right. Here's a move. Speaking of picking up the tab, you missed it, but night before last, Justin on the line, we were at Bojack's. You're liking this, aren't you, Pat? Well, there's something different happening here. This is going to be intriguing. Had part of the crew with us, and Justin actually pick, right. picked up the tab and left before. Look at this, gentlemen. Yeah, it's now, looking really good. Now it's all about punching the water. Really good. Boy, he look. He's in. We saw the splash. If he carries that line. Made a little right well, he made a he bit of a right move, too, which well, I think he, he kind of needed to. Yeah. Right yeah, that's what I'm saying. If he carries that line. Look at that. He's starting to see his head right there. This, this could be the one we're looking for, gentlemen. During test dog, we counted about 15, 16 seconds they that the dog's going to be out of sight from the handler's oh, point. Yeah, he's making a move line. with the bird. So we were wondering, so you said 15 to 16, because from back here, it was about 7 to 8 off the jib, but obviously the jib's higher. So. Right, from the handler's point of with view. With the jib, I can see the splash as he entered. Yeah. Look at this. This Jib Joe saying? is awesome, I'm telling you. Jibjoe.com. <laughs> is this where we say he could go all the way? Possibly. <laughs> no, we're not going to jinx him. So, Luke, in that 15 to 18 seconds where you're not seeing them, it's kind of like, you know, remember on the old Apollo missions where they're on the dark side of the moon, right? And there's no communication for a couple seconds. It's going through your head at the line as a handler, like, <laughs> okay, where's he going to pop out? What do I got to do right here? You're just hoping. That's all you can do is hope. So you guys are seeing it from the camera angle. I'm looking at it through the binoculars here from the back of the line. And like you said, if Chris Beardman was here, he'd be counting Chris it down. Chris Berman be saying, he could go, go all the oh. way. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Berman is great. You got me thinking Look beer, it. man, because I'm fixing to be owing you. Uh, no, no, no. We went double or nothing, but this is... Look at it's just... Uh, I'm wondering if he's coming out. A he's going to be a little. Oh my goodness! This is a. This is a. Mark Look at job. this. Look at him hunt, though. No, no. Great don't indicator. Go but I just—he just has a feel. Like, wait a minute. Swing away from the gun. Yep. That's. Ooh. Another right, direction. Here's your gun guy. Let's. 
start processing information. I think you're going to hear a roar here about now. Bam! <laughs> You know what you say? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. That run, that run right there give you chills as a handler. When that you hoop you that heard? Make that, swim. that was the judges. Mm -hmm. That's a good side when the judges hoop. <laughs> what was that you just said, Luke? I said, I said that a, a run like that will give you chills as a handler after watching that dog make that swim, and you just can feel the... The adrenaline filling up and watching that dog go out there and put on that hunt like pat said that dog has marked that bird and you know he's going to go out there and find it once he finally grabs that bird your body just lights up with chills Ooh. do you see him i mean when he got out of the water he said the bird is here but i'll tell you the key move he made was not in the second water it was in the first water but you see how he broke and he did he he he, he started to angle that channel instead of square it he had he saw this in a different way and I got to say, Pat, you called it out. You mm -hmm. said, folks, yeah, Dwayne, yeah, yeah, we're about to see something different here, something special. I mean, that, that's as cool to me as anything right there. And, and Pat saw it before anybody else did, oh, right? That, yeah. yeah, that was that. that well, the behavior I saw in the first channel was different. Yeah. But you're right, Luke. And at first you wonder, right, if that this... truck fell on me right now, I wouldn't be worried because Justin could come over here and pick it up. That's exactly it right. Oh, I bet I guarantee you, owner Jason Bryan is watching from home, cheering and cheering Look at him that. on. Mm, wow! Oh, it didn't take him long to come up with that score. Well, there wasn't a whole lot to score. <laughs> there, that just goes to show you the dog takes the straightest line, gets rewarded. So, how many open teams do we have left? Pretty sure that got, just locked. Got, him. I think he. I think he was in the eighth position because I believe Rody and JJ are in seventh, and they're coming up here in a few. Oh, yep. Well, that puts some heat on. Some. So he came in here in eighth. Yep. And you got to be sixth, right? Cash. Top you gotta six. Be six. He's locked in. If this dog doesn't make it, I'll buy you the whole thing six pack. Oh. And I'm not betting on that one. Hold on, hold on. David's calling timeout. What I was just going to say is we have updated scores broken out by amateur and open. So let's go through these right here. So uh, through four series, Georgia uh, 430, Pine 367, Katie 360, Henry 348, Dre 313, Frank 301, Huck 284, Blaze 276, Cash 258 with three still to run. So that puts... Blaze, Cash, and who's behind Blaze? Huck. That puts Huck, Blaze, and Cash are in our finals. So Mike Gibson just made yet another amateur final. I, I want to take a look in, at the history books here and see how many, but I believe that puts him, if he wasn't already, locks him into all time. He, he and Ron Anderson are right up there. I'll tell you scene. what, that was a pleasure to see, my friend. I'm Congratulations, Bay. Great. We're run. just talking to Justin oh, as he come online. You're not pumped, are you? <laughs> That's something you remember the rest of your life. You know, one of those deals. And I'm. Thank you. Wow. In the up, open you. division. Uh, updated scores, Joe 352, Tigger 238, Chief 231, Zeus 214, just saw Cash put up a 200 right there. So to answer your question, Jay Paul, five open have run, seven left to run among the open competitors. Yeah. Cash needs to have two stumble just a little bit, and it doesn't even have to be a big trip up because they were so bunched in there together. So I'd be feeling really, really good about my chances of playing tomorrow if I were Justin. Up to the line now is Waylon with Ernie D'Antoni. But when I see Ernie with the white beard with Waylon, I like to say, you know, Waylon and Willie or maybe Kenny. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> here. <laughs> May not win a duck calling contest, but he could win this. <laughs> I wonder how much actual duck hunting he does. I know, I know. Yeah, 
your focus is not on the perfect highball here. It's just... <laughs> Okay, another handler decided to stand up for the send. I don't believe he saw this go work. You think most of them are looking too far right? Mm -hmm. I think they're looking back at the guns and the long position. Ooh, yeah, well, there's your answer to that. He wanted to bail back toward the left bird. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. One thing certainly about this bird, when you look out there, there's no identify a holding line that gives you an idea there's a gun there. And there's that kind of tall cover that also kind of obscures you. So I bet you that it's easy to not anticipate that bird coming from that position by the dog. Clean that one up. Of course, Mr. Ernie and Wayland coming in third in the amateur standings into this series with 180 points, 15 off of second place Stuart Williams and Tex, and leading the pack coming in with a 149, 31 points ahead of Wayland are John Lamar and Smokey. So I'm looking at these scores in the open division. Justin and Cash just made up some ground. They were five points behind Carter and Zeus. Now after that, they're 14 points ahead of them. Came in with 186, with Carter and Zeus ahead of them with 181. JJ and Brody with 169. Shooter and Carter with a 168. Bobby and Legend with 158. So the sixth place dog coming in was 168. They came in just 18 points behind that. Justin's got to be feeling good about his chances of moving forward. In this test, 18 points, really easy to give up. This is not. One thing to miss the water, it's another thing to go there, but I'll tell you what, he's, he came around there in a hurry, but he's Missed still going to... Missed the water, hooked the gun, and still made it to the fall area. Yeah, but he's... Tee shot in golf. <laughs> <laughs> Starts out way far left, it hooks back right. I think Haney says that he can cure your slice with one special drill. <laughs> well, he's not going to waste any time coming back. It looked to me like Waylon came back looking for the swim, and I think Ernie was kind of influencing him to get a little skinny, and, and Waylon might have taken him a little too literally there. Yeah, because he definitely knew where the bird was. I mean, he went directly to the fall area and started hunting it up. But again, you're always wanting to shoot for that under the arc. It's the safest spot, so I think Ernie had the right idea. a little bit of a move right there. Yeah, definitely made a move back to his left. I was going to make another good move probably. Well. Mm -hmm. There was another dog in the water.
Not a bad place to be there? No, either. it is absolutely not a bad place to be. I know he's wishing he wouldn't handle on that go bird. Read my mind. I think Waylon's generally a dog that likes to swim and, and, and not afraid to make those big swims. I think that's why you saw Ernie kind of push him left on that left bird. He was maybe worried about what that first dog did and, and sw swimming to the, to the uh, right side of that pond and swimming down the shore. He's leaving a wake, isn't he? Yeah, he's a fast dog, even in the water. <laughs> Looks like a Thor boat with a 60 horse on it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Pat, I like you better all the time. <laughs> it looked to me like he just saw the holding blind there. Mm -hmm. It looks to me like he is taking the exact same route that we just saw Justin's dog take. I would think you'd see a similar hunt here. Boom, we see him just look at us, swing away from the gun. Now this bird's up and out of the water a little bit. Make another swing away. No, it's going to take another one. There, there we go. There we go. He just winded it. There we go. Well, you sure got to like that, Mark. Hmm. See Ernie's relief right there. Yeah. He leaned back and saw the bird in his mouth. No. Yes, sir. I tell you, Waylon has shown me through this that he is one heck of a marker. Gosh, this dog can mark. Yeah. And I think he screwed the middle bird up because he didn't see it, obviously. Yep, that's right. Smile there from oh yeah, that's fun. Handle on that go bird that the other two had to be pleased with those. Well, here's your score. Looking board. at our amateur scores, there we see that right now, Jason Flaster and Cash are the leader in this clubhouse with the 258. Blaze and Mike Gibson second place with 276. Huck and Brian Broussard 284. Bunched in there pretty good, 301, 313, then a little gap to 348. Um, we've got three dogs, two dogs left now. Three dogs left. In the amateur? In the amateur. Well, now that, now that they just ran. Two dogs left, three left. scores Correct. left. Correct, three scores left. Yeah. Correct. And what's his current score, do we know? Can we get that graphic up again, guys? Got it right here. Got it. Coming you got in through three series of 180. Hmm. There we go. We take a look at it again. So he's coming in with a with a 180. He had a pretty big gap between him and Cash. I think it's going to be close because he did handle on that middle bird. When we when we take a look at this right now, uh, the main thing to make is make sure though is not the Cash. <laughs> it's the Frank and Carol at 301. Well, as long as you're below that, you're in. Yeah. That's Correct. exactly right. As long as he's below a 301, he is guaranteed in. And right now, Steven and Dre are sitting on the bubble mm -hmm. at that 313. Two Correct. Because I'm pretty confident that he's going to come in well below that 313. So that's going to put them in sixth place with two dogs left to go. Actually, I guess that means John and Henry be the bubble dog with 348. If both of them didn't finish, then they would. Oh, Isn't Mike Gibson in the count? It? Yes, he is. We might need him to come over here and do this math for us. Because <laughs> you and I are struggling. <laughs> He's a very smart man. <laughs> Luke's in here behind us saying, just give me a score. Yeah. <laughs> give me the score. I what do you think? The score. We're betting. We might as well keep betting. Yeah, we both at 50. 50. Yeah, Pat and I at the exact same time both said 50. I hope you're right. Give or take. Give or take. I mean, it's going to be with a couple points of the way, I believe. I think they're going to get him pretty good for hooking the bird on the left. And, of course, he had a handle there. Yeah. 
a little bit of looking around. It's good to leave them with a good final impression. Brody Best and JJ step into the line here. Okay, Rody's going to put the shells in his pocket right off the bat. He didn't want to waste any extra energy. He's even going to do us a little housekeeping. I'll clean it all up. For... Rody's good at policing the area. So let's go back to, to Mr. Ernest, because I'm trying to score it. You know, we initially we set a 50, but how many hand casts did he have? Because he had 20 for the end of the area. And I'm looking back, he may have had half a dozen whistles. On, on the gourd? Yeah, and that's two points apiece. And piece. he hunted on this side of the water. He came out. He didn't get across. I don't know if that's significant, any more significant than... Well, well, we'll find but, out but, here. No, you got to have 10 to 15 on the left-hand bird. I'm, I'm looking at that middle bird. He had 20 for a handle to the air. And I'm thinking he probably had half a dozen whistles, so that's 12 with no cast mm -hmm. refusals. So that's 32 on that bird. A lime. We may be a little bit light here, guys. Honestly, I wasn't watching for cast. Do you have any cast refusals out there in the middle? I wasn't, I wasn't watching close enough. Yeah. You, you were just more, that, more waiting for him to see him get it on the bird. I would hope. Yeah. You thinking more in the 60 range, maybe? Maybe a little more than that. I don't know. We're going to know here in just a minute. I still think he's in great, great shape, but... Started looking for that second bird to come out, trying to find that gun station. So Rody moves to grab the shotgun. I think Rody already had a couple in his pocket. I think Rody's blowing an old DR-85 Haydell duck call. <laughs> A second nowhere. Wow. That was, a bad that was real low. <coughs> Got another no bird? Yeah. Yep. Ted, that old DR-85, that is my favorite hunt test duck call because it is so light and oh, it never yeah. jams. And they're about 20 bucks a piece. <laughs> Earlier y'all were talking about how sometimes a, a no bird can be good, especially if they didn't see it the first time. But now that you have back to back yeah. no birds. That's the, it gets yeah. tougher there. I think that's a hurt rather than a hindrance. Uh oh, we lost our feed there, guys. Hello. Not sure if we still have audio or not, but if we do, we apologize for the technical difficulties. Can 
you hear us in the trailer. Good deal. All right, so we stu still do have audio. We've lost our video, but that doesn't mean that everyone else has. So I hope you guys have, have video out there. You have video and we don't. We'll just call it the best we can see here directly behind the line. And if you don't have video and we have audio, this just became a radio broadcast. <laughs> well, I see a video over here on the monitor over in the, in the gallery tent. So for some reason, we've lost it here on the monitor. Roadies, broadcast station. JJ is one of those versatile dogs that we've seen. She's an SRS champion. She's also a master hunter. And she has a few qualifying placements on her record as well. So having a hybrid test is no stranger to her. Can I give you guys a little bit of local flavor here? That uh, DR85, do you know how it got its name and where it was made? No. Got its name because Eli Haydell introduced it in 1985. It's double read DR, no. 85 for the year. And to this day, Haydell game calls are still made right here in Boucher City. Bossier City, Louisiana. <laughs> Rod and Kelly Haydell continuing their father's tradition. Rody's going to stand up to send, send her. I'm not sure that she saw that. Like she took off right. Oh shoot! Yeah, so you asked about the double well. no bird. I think this is a place where it definitely hurts you because I believe that JJ got a really good look at the long mark and you know got two bad throws. Don't think that I'll ever saw the middle mark, and then the third one wasn't the best in the world either. Even though Rody's handling here, JJ's working with him very well and being compliant in his cast to get over to that first retreat. I tell you, that's a really hard one. That third throw was not the best. It was a little better than the first two, and as a judge, it's got to be really, really just gut wrenching because, you know, three yeah. no birds and coming back could be even worse. So. You know, you're kind of damned if you do and damned right. if you don't in that situation when you're sitting back there in the judge's seat. Now, I've got Dwayne and Tommy behind me, both judging. Yeah. These guys have done a wonderful, wonderful job, too. Yeah, they have. One St. Louis National I know had five no birds with the same dog in the same series. And they were shooting hen pheasant flyers, and they were, you know, that's that, that difficult to manage. But actually, I wasn't the only one. So we ended up all at the end of the rotation, and everybody just kept musical chairs in the holding line, out of the holding line, in. But you know what? Sometimes you got to just practice no birds and training. So they don't get overly rattled and over, overly upset by them. So I've got a question for you, Pat. If you have a really, really bad throw in training, are you going to call a no bird just like you would at a test, or are you just going to go and run it? I guess I tend to run it unless there's something so technical about it that I want to hold the dog more accountable for his other behavior. Had a good water entry here, JJ. Yeah, it is. In a good spot. Great water entry here. She's bending in right where she needs to be. Job there, Pat. I find that really interesting. How about how about you, Luke? If you get a throw 
that would normally be a no bird at a test or a trial and training? Or are you going to continue on or are you going to call no bird and take the dog offline? I think I would agree with Pat 100%. It's just going to depend on the technicality of the throw. You know, if I'm trying to work on this bird like this left one, if I'm working on a left cheaty corner cutter, I really want to make sure that bird is out in front of the water so it's a fair, fair throw for the dog. Like Waylon and Ernie had a score of a 79. I believe that'll keep them into the top six. Ooh, if it was okay. a 79 and a 180, you're right. A 259 keeps them in there. Okay. Well, that was quite a bit higher, yeah. You know, it was higher than we thought, but again, we, we got kind of caught up in the moment because yeah. that watermark was so Well, exactly. Right. Well, Someone last. just told me they only gave him four on that watermark, which is great scoring it. I think there was a lot more that went on out there. Yeah, I agree. You see Rody give his iconic, loud, growly sin for this longbird to really try to drive her out there to get that longbird. Did that start with Cookie? No, no that's just how he's always, it's always how he's always sent. Wow. And it was just, everybody just calls him the Cookie Monster. I can't remember that back in the day, him sending like that. But All I right, guess let's just start. Yeah. I don't see a dog breaking for the water from that angle. But we have seen one recover from that angle. Pick it oh, up. Yeah, yeah, you bet we have. Come on, JJ. We've actually had some pretty good scores with dogs going that way, but they had the, the other birds there. were good. <clears throat> Oof. She found the gun. Yeah. Okay. That holding line's kind of. I don't know if it keeps sagging, but you can kind of, I think you can kind of see the gun sticking out the side of the holding mud. So sometimes they'll wrap them Got where it. they're completely all the way around them so they, the dogs can't see the, the, the gunner from the back side or the front side. We saw but a very similar one. run to this earlier on yep. yeah, that mark and it wound up good for the dog. Let's go back to Waylon and Ernie for just a second. Okay. So let's break it down a little bit. You know, first off, we know four points. What we've been told on the long bird is the ticker comes up here. That left hand mark, that could have easily <coughs> been 12, 14, 15 points. Hooking the gun, staying completely dry, coming in the back door. Did the dog pick it up clean? Certainly. Didn't handle, but Didn't it had handle, a hunt there too. But it was about as ugly a line as you yeah. could take to that bird. The only thing would be worse would be what I think you and Lardy used to tra term as a triple H. You know, hunting house half acre, uh, but that's about. I mean, seriously. So, you could easily have twenty points on yeah, those two birds right there. Depending on the whistles, I mean, every cast refusal is five points. I lost track of the whistles. The handle there is twenty. I, I, I can see that dog picking up 55, 60 points on that middle bird. Twenty just in the handle there alone. You know, twelve to twenty more in the whistles. So. Maybe we got a little caught in the moment there. I think missing that, that go bird is just bad luck. So I do too. I mean, it's just it's not a lack of anything on the dog's part other than I think every dog that's had trouble with it just didn't see it. Luke just came back here a quick word with Mr. Ernie. What did he have to say about that run? Or his thoughts? I, I, you know, I think he's just happy to be in the finals. Um, you know, when you make the top six, you're not really worried about what the score they gave you was. You're just glad to be there. Stepping to the line now, Shooter and Carter Turner, our 2023 Ukanuba Team of the Year here. Of course, that award's given to the team that's essentially most consistent throughout the year. I believe someone told me that he had an average of 5.6 points per. That was Rip. That Shooter was had an average of 3.6 per start, six. which in the open division is really good. It's still amazing. Amazing. And, with, and, and most of our events this year filled up, so there were a lot of big trials. Um, and so you had to really be a, on, spot on to, to average that much of a start, first start. Look, you've won the Yukonuba Team of the Year before, um, correct? Yep, I've, so. won it, I've won it three times. That's what I thought. So I was going to say two, but then I didn't want to be, speak wrong, so three. <laughs> What's that mean to you as a handler? 
Um, I mean, it's a great accomplishment, but I think it means more about the dog. Um, you know, it's as a handler, you're happy to be there and you're happy to get that award, but you're also happy to be able to stand next to such a consistent dog that puts you in the right position and keeps you on top all year long. You know, I, I know, and uh, you know, I, I won with Indy twice and Bang once, and I'll never forget those dogs. And I know Shooter's going to be a dog that Carter will remember forever. Big old send on that Gobert. <clears throat> Shooters of Seaside. So I'm trying to recall Seaside Kennels. They were down south of Florida. Oh, um, Frank. Frank and Rita Jones. Frank and Frank Rita, and Rita Jones. Jones. Had a couple of Seaside right. dogs. Actually bought one directly from Frank and Rita. Seaside's. Where's the beef? Call name Angus. Oh, I got it. 70 oh, 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 is the score oh, oh, for oh, JJ oh, and Rody oh, oh, there. Oh. And so JJ and Rody came in uh, to that last that series, big? the 169. Okay. Whew. So they're now sitting at 239. For a minute, it looked like he was going to jump in the water there on that Goldberg. Well, I think that's pretty doggone consistent because JJ had a very similar hunt and handle out there on the middle end. tell you this you guys are obviously making this compelling because I just got a text from my wife that she is watching this hello Robin hey Robin and she asked me to remind tell everybody how much I love my wife which I do <laughs> but she won't watch five minutes of training she's been watching this like crazy so I guess I guess you guys are doing a great job Robin, when uh, Pat drinks the free beers from Jay Paul, I'll make sure that he doesn't get rowdy tonight and dance on any tables. I'll make sure he gets back to his room safely. We appreciate you tuning in and watching. Let me tell you something, gentlemen. The gravity challenged lady has not yet begun to sing. So. <laughs> All right. Pat, how nice would it be to have Jib Joe behind you every day when you're training and be able to have this point of view? Incredible. Oh. It'd be incredible. I probably would have beat Lardy at a national if I'd had one of these. <laughs> <laughs> and Farmer. <laughs> those are my, t my two arch nemesis, those guys, great trainers. But now uh, you beat them both on the weekends. There you go, oh, looks like yeah. Shooter set up a hunt short on this side of the bank. It was always the bridesmaid. <clears throat> All right, what do we got here? Shooter got in the water oh, and then turned around and started hunting on this side. But, yeah. Gonna work his way across. Hmm. Tell you what, guys. Worked it out. Yep, it worked out. We've got Lee Howard standing over here over our right shoulders. Looking at his face, it's like he wants to watch, but he doesn't want to watch. I know those nerves. There he's walked back away. He couldn't help himself. He had to come over and see how that turned out. And as soon as that dog had the bird, he walked away again. Man, that's got to be tough. It's like watching your kid, you know? All right, here he goes. I like it. He's real tight to the dog. Clo close the door and made a big scent. Hey, you've done all you can do as a handler right here. Started out left, but we saw a, a correction there. That was pretty nice too. But broke a little right. And we're going to know about ten yards out of the water here. He's going to make a break for the water. See, see Carter see holding it. his hand out. Oh, he's been, Hopefully he's been, and he's been. In. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Did he break getting the water there? Looked like it. I'm pretty sure he's in. That was a great no. correction. Dang, he's already over there. Oh, he went. Well, if he's already up there, he didn't get, he, he must have. Come back out again after he crossed to that little point. I believe that he caught the far point and came back out and down it. Okay. The, the not, 
You predicted that somebody would do that. There it is. There he goes. You got it. Okay. Oh. Had a little hunch on each bird. You mm -hmm. know, I had hunts on each bird. I don't know. I think, no I, handles. Think, I think shooter, yeah, yes. shooter being one of the most consistent dogs. Baseball or something. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Lee? Lee Howard just walked up here. Let's get that. It's like watching your grand young and play football or baseball or something. I was like he was on the mound right there. That was kind of nerve wracking. <laughs> I can see it in your eyes, buddy. Oh, yeah. I love that dog. I love that handler. You know what? I think I do too. <laughs> I mean, I've thoroughly enjoyed him. You can breathe. Color's coming back to your lips now. I didn't want to walk, so I walked back there. I said, I gotta watch. We were watching you do that too, as well. Tell you guys. I tell you what, the the suspense is building, the excitement here in the gallery. Totally so. Shooter being one of the most consistent dogs of the year, I think not only does that show that he's a talented dog, but it shows he's an intelligent dog. You saw that dog think through each one of those birds and work it out to get that without a handle. I don't know who's happier right now, Carter or Lee. i tell you what, uh, that's about as emotional as I've seen Lee Howard. I think his owner, Anya Walters, is probably jumping up and down right now. I have a daughter who was a great softball player. I can remember the uh, first time in a big game I watched her hit a grand slam. Oh, 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 oh. Yep. Lee's got to have a little bit of that feeling right now, which is pretty dang cool. Definitely raises my respect, which was already high another notch for Lee Howard. And dang good job by Carter and Shooter. I've watched him walk off with the dog. You can, you can see the... The bond and respect between him and his dogs. I mean, there's just a. I was just about to say the mutual respect between him and the dog. Yeah, yep. I mean, it's, it's, nice. it's, it's real obvious to watch. Yep. That's a formula for success. That. <clears throat> of course, we're going to see Carter again because he and Cappy came into this finals with a pretty substantial lead, and Shooter certainly didn't give up any ground there. Not sure whether he's going to be able to make up any, but I don't think he gave up much. Welcome to the line, our next to last amateur uh, to go today, meaning he came in today in second place. That's uh, Tex with uh, handler Stuart Williams. They come in with a three series score of 165. Stuart hails from Natchez, Mississippi. We've had a Super Retriever Series crown championship in Natchez before. We've also had it several other places, was in Huntsville for several years, and of course now for quite a few years, two or three at least, we've been here at the shreveport Bossier City, Louisiana area, and very gracious to the shreveport Bossier City Sports Commission, as well as all of the residents here in town for treating us so great this whole uh, week, and uh, really enjoy being here. Should have a score here in just a second for Carter and Shooter. Very interesting to see where that puts David, you weren't here earlier in the week, but I pointed out the rich history of great dogs from the Shreveport area back in the 60s. There were three dogs that won national championships right out of the town right of Shreveport. Right out of Shreveport. Right out of Shreveport. Awesome. Well, amongst other really good, now there was a whole, mm -hmm. a whole clan of really successful dogs. I, I think they won at 68, 70, and 76. Wow. Nice well, throw there. Yeah. A long three history. Three different, and not, you know, three different people. Three different. You know, I thought Tex got a really good look at that middle bird, but he swung away from it, and Stuart apparently didn't yeah. like that a whole lot, wanted to make Dead Gum sure that Interesting. he gets his right. Well, the dog looks very animated. 
Well, he saw that bird really good, but he looked, he really wanted to go left after that. I think if he'd have just kicked him off with a verbal. He'd have ran over towards that left bird. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well. If he'd have called out Tex, Tex would have broke left, I believe. Got that left hand mark. Carter's got a lot of experience in his shows there. He, uh, he obviously recognized that. Let's do, do a little wind check there. Yep. Grab some grass. And... All of this is Texas' first year competing in the Super Retriever Series. Um, Stewart himself is no stranger. He's been a multi-time finalist and has had some dogs. Well. Casper and Stormy that have done well himself. You know, Carter was in that same spot and he decided to wait a minute and the dog checked up and came back and got it. But I guess if you wait a little longer and they get over the hill in the water, it makes that handle that much more challenging. Well, I think he's running a little bit on guard also. Right. You know, I would be. Just updated the scores on Facebook and Carter Turner and Shooter. Picked up a 40. There you go. So they're seeing him 208. So that total through four series, that guarantees them a spot in the final six. I was just told I've got bad math here, and you, that is correct. It doesn't guarantee him a spot. It does not. It does not. Sorry. Cash and Justin jumped up. They are now guaranteed a spot in the final six with 200, with five dogs left to go. was not that far off the bird, just wanted to hunt the edge of the water there. Not afraid to re reset him. I mean, he's done that a couple times. Didn't like the look. Got rid of the. Got rid of the bird. Rehealed. I can certainly see that on this bird. left start than we've seen in quite a while, which... But how about that water entry? Oh, yeah. It's the next water entry I want to see. Amen. <laughs> but it's a good start, I think, don't you? We'll know here when we see the angle. Boy, yep. 
what's going to happen now? You just oh, need a little left turn there. Oh, don't, don't go back into that old fall. There was a dog earlier that went and then. Justin's dog. Justin's it turned dog. out really, really and good for him as well. Yep, the and water. this guy's in. Man, the dog hit the water just as hard. I think, I think Tex is just trying to be really, really honest well, here. With that jib, you see him quick, though, on that angle. So, Pat, would you rather have him push off to get more, or would you rather have him come right to get less? You can't complain about this. Let's I'd be happy to see him get more. It's a whole lot harder to teach him to get in it than it is to stay out of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. He's definitely angling towards the bird. If you've been to Natchez, Mississippi and trained with Leo and Rivertown and Stewart and those guys, you know what their grounds look like. And this is the exact kind of setup Stewart's looking for. This is what he feels comfortable with, these bigger swims and these long birds like this. Oh, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. It looks like he's kind of heading for that left yeah, gap. Yeah, he made a little sure bit that's of where left Justin's, move. Isn't that where Justin's dog got out also? Well, he went in, yeah. Do you think some, I think sometimes they look for those holes in the cover there to, yeah. for an exit point. That's what I'm saying. I, I believe Justin's yeah. dog, his entire swim was a little bit left of Texas here, but I think they're going to leave at a similar spot. I think you're going to see a similar outcome. <laughs> he's just going to sit there and watch the show, isn't he? Yeah, because you're right, Jay Paul. Justin Justin's dog came out. Yeah, kind of where that tree is right there. Yeah, I think we're gonna see Tex do the same thing here. Mm -hmm. And Luke, you weren't wrong talking about Stuart being comfortable. Just made himself comfortable sitting up there. Doesn't look stressed <laughs> at all. <laughs> Not much he can do at this point. That's yeah. trust right there. I wouldn't be surprised to see him stand up when his dog gets out of the water. Oh sure. <laughs> camera's over there looking to get a perspective where the bird is and then it goes back to the dog. You'll see that water. Sometimes when you can't see them and near the edge you see that commotion as they exit the water. Yeah, the big splash just identify then. the dog. There he goes. He made, he made a little move. Yep. Actually this dog came out and broke right even quicker. He did. What is that up in the field? You see that? You know, it looks like a five-gallon bucket, but surely there's not a five-gallon bucket sitting out there. So the, the marshal said during test dog, there's a five-gallon bucket out there that's blocking a pipe. It's over the top of a drain pipe, an overflow pipe for that pond, so they have it blocking it to make sure the dogs don't run into it. So it's not a bucket sitting out there that somebody's been throwing birds in. It's a bucket It seemed like the there. dog identified it. when he, I don't think he... He just made a little drive-by there. I mean, he's, it doesn't that, matter. It's been there out there. For, no, no, I know. It's yeah. just from the angle he came, I just... I don't think that's why he's there, but it... This is where I get nervous with the out of sight. Yeah, I, I think he's just behind that cluster of trees, but he's definitely putting on a substantial hunt there. You made a little glance to the right oh, yeah. there. I think when he glanced right, he referenced the holding line a little bit, which helps him identify where the where the gunner is. is that I don't of, mind identifying the gunner. Where I get nervous is when you have a protracted hunt like this. I think sometimes the dog says, okay, there's the gunner. I've hunted everywhere on this side. Maybe I'm on the wrong side. I need yeah. to go hunt that side for a while. And then they yeah. swap over. Yeah, he's at the right. He's just not deep enough. I bet I you think right there he's working this out very well. Oh, yeah, he is. He really is. Did you get it just in? Yes. Is that our third oh, dog to make the swim? Fourth dog to make the swim? Very mm -hmm. controlled hunt. That was a good job by Stuart and Tex. All right, there you go. You see the scores as they stand now. 
five dogs left to run. Carter and Turner are sitting there in the seventh place. Justin and Cash are guaranteed a spot in the finals. And Rody and JJ so are going to need a ton of help. Yep. Setting in six with five left to run. They need all five of them to stumble. There's scores for 10 of our 12 amateurs. So, as we said, Cash, Waylon, Blaze, and Huck. Tell you what, Cash are made all a, in. Made a Wait pretty good move. Stewart score here. And then, of course, one more amateur to run as well. Sorry to speak over you there, David. But I tell you, Cash made a little bit of a move there as well. Mm hmm. I think it's pretty safe to say they're going to finish this. Oh, yeah. That means that tomorrow morning we will be back out at uh, last night Palmetto Event Center, WK Palmetto Event Center in Bossier City. Love that grounds out there. So we'll be coming back out to the WK Palmetto Event Center tomorrow for the finals. We'll be giving you guys a, a start time here in just a little bit. As soon as this concludes, don't leave after the last dog runs because we will have some information about the location and the start time for tomorrow's finals. The judges have done a great job with time management. When is the last time you can remember us even coming close to finishing the whole thing on a Saturday, David? I can't. I mean, I was just literally thinking, you know, we always run over. I mean, the judges normally, they want to make the tests really hard because this is the crown championship. And there have been so many years where, you know, we, we want to finish a series in one day, but because we couldn't, we run it over to the next day. And it's, it's amazing that, you know, Bobby and Legend are about to step to the line here in a moment. And I counted the, they're going to be our 19th dog. So to Pat's point, we're going to get through all 24 today. That's all right. And it's not because we've had easy tests whatsoever. No. The, these tests have shown the judges a lot. There's been a ton of them. I tell you, I don't think that there's anybody here. And, and Luke, you're the only competitor sitting here in the group of us. But I can't find any place where that we go, pardon me, folks, to see their score, 65. It's a 230 total. Texan Stewart, of course they had. A little bit of a handle there out in, the, out in the center. But, you know, one of the things that you hear once in a while is, man, you know, just there wasn't enough tests there to give us a chance to move. You can't say that, in my opinion, about any of these four series. Luke? I agree with that 100%. One thing, you know, when Matt's marshalling, what he likes to see from when a judge sets up a test is there's a possibility of a lead change in every series. Doesn't mean that there is a lead change because if that first dog keeps doing good, then he's gonna keep holding the spot. But get, every dog has the opportunity to, to step up to the front after each series. And that's that's what they've done with all of these tests. And these judges have done a great job of not only setting up tests that allow you to do that, but being consistent with their scoring to allow the, the handlers to understand what's going on. So here's the situation with our amateurs. Stuart and Tex are at 2.30, they're in. Cash and Jason, 258, they're in. Waylon and Ernie, 259, they're in. Blaze and Mike, 276, they're in. Huck and Brian, 284, they're in. One dog still to run. Smokey and John Lamar, they come in at 149. The uh, dog there on the bubble is Frank and Carol at 301. So if we do a little simple math here. 152. Correct. As long as they get less than 152, they're in. But if they get 153, Frank and Carol are in. Step of the line here, Legend and Bobby Wills. Actually, 152. They have to be under. At a 301 tie, Frank and Carol will get the nod because they would have the lower score today. Bobby just pointed out that bird to Legend. Likes what he saw.
Legend got a dang good look at that one. I'll be using that gun to block. Oh, I think he saw it. Just then there, he flicked his eyes. No, 100%. But. Another great thing about this sport is we see people come in, you know, they've only been competing a couple years, like a Carter Turner or someone like Luke, who used to be one of the newcomers, who has been around for several years now and established themselves. And then we have some competitors, you know, that have been around in this game for 20 some odd years, where you see Rody Best out there and Bobby Wills, they've been competing in the Super Retriever Series for, for quite a long time. So really great to see so many new faces continue to come into this sport, but also to see uh, so many of our more veteran handlers uh, continue to qualify every year. I got the opportunity to do a little pre-training for the Crown with Bobby this week, and uh, I really enjoyed working with him and getting to see his style, and I really learned a lot from him, and I respect the way he trains his dog, and he's not afraid to differentiate the test for every dog that he needs to. And um, You know, he, he loves those dogs and, and does a great job working with them. Bobby's not going to take a chance. Legend is a very, very watery dog. I think Legend marked it, and I think Bobby had, knew that he would be able to get him on it really, really quick, but Bobby also knows that Legend loves that water, and he wasn't going to take a chance and let him drive and go pick up that long bird. Doesn't have it yet, though, does he? Well, I thought he had it in his mouth. He's still just a little deep. Probably an example right there where in the world of field trails there would be enough scent from the birds with these wet birds that a dog would not run by that bird. Right. Exactly. Making this a little harder. You're not seeing that. You're not also you're not seeing that tall cover on the other side of that water waving anymore. That wind's kind of died down a little bit. I think that bird may have went just a little bit further than that mark has been going as well. No, Bobby's not particularly happy with that right now. And Legend definitely has it. This dog is an incredible market dog. He's definitely got the ability to come out here and nail both of these. We hear Bobby tell him to find his bird, talk him into it. That's the life he's in because he kicked him off quick. Yeah, Looks like he's in the right place. Nice place to enter the water. It looks like he's dead online to me. Now check down, break down, buddy. Oh! Like I said, he has the ability to just come out and nail these other two. That's as clean as we've seen that mark today. That was gorgeous. Luke, you were talking about your pre-national experience. I couldn't agree more. I think some of my fondest memories are the pre-nationals, even more so than some of the nationals, getting to train with other good professionals in other parts of the country. You can learn so much. That's cool. Always nice to get somebody else's perspective when mm -hmm. it comes to a training day. Absolutely. You develop some long, some friendships that last a lifetime there. <coughs> He's going for it. Good spot. Mm -hmm. really special jobs, the dogs angled this channel. It wasn't so much where they got in, it's where the angle in which they exited, it's just, 
knowing this dog, are, this are is not the dog a bad makes. place to be. He's going to come back to the left. We're seeing it already right okay. now. Bobby Tun, get over there, get over there. This dog likes being wet. When do you think he sees it? Right? Come ooh, back in ooh, line ooh. nice. I think he, he okay, just could tell when he saw the water. This That's a really good spot. That's a great place to be. Come on, legend. Especially for a well-trained dog. I think that's the first one we've actually seen enter the water on line to the bird. Well, we're, a lot of dogs broke right at that point. He broke left. Tell you, Bobby works harder than anybody. There's his head. You see him starting to come in the, in the picture. If there's anybody that has worked hard and deserves to, to get here, he's been snake bit at the crown for a little while. This dog's in a really good position. I'd like to see maybe a hair left of that. Bobby came in here in fifth. He knows that he needs after that handle. Very solid mark here. I'll be shocked if we were to see a quick handle by Bobby at all. Not yet. I'd be very surprised if this dog ends up handling. He's going to end up. It's all about which way he breaks, Pat. If he breaks left, he's looking good. If he breaks right, big, fast dog. If he thinks it's on the right hand side of that hide, it can go to heck in a hurry here. There, he's in a good spot. He's under yep. the arc. Broke left. Now where the gunners are standing. All right. Boom. You see that little move there? There it is. It looks like he saw it. You don't teach that. I learned that. That is that little reverse pivot. Oh, we got a little fist pump going in the gallery. <laughs> no, good, good, good. That was a great run by Bobby Wills and Legend. Well, that was fun to watch. That was great. Bobby's running a dog named Legend, and Bobby's definitely a legend in this game. Every single one of us that, that compete in this have always looked up to him, and you never, you never know when that dog's going to pull it out. And Legend did a great job recovering right there. Look at him there. Mm. Coming in in fifth place, Bobby knew that he was kind of there on the bubble, could go either way, and so he knew he needed a good run right there. And I think that's going to have you back in the finals, guys. I would agree. I think he definitely would be back in the finals. We'll have to see, but Bobby with a with a really quality run right there. Well, hey guys, I think we all need to get up and stretch because we have uh, four dogs left. And uh, you think it's time for the seventh inning stretch? I think it's time for the seventh <laughs> inning stretch, gentlemen. A little stretch to the left, stretch to the right. All our viewers at home are excited. We got we got four dogs left. You gonna sing a little Harry Carey or what? No, but what I am gonna do. <laughs> what I am gonna do is take this moment to tell everyone reminder to enter our we hit 10k giveaway super retriever series has 10,000 followers now on instagram that's what we call a segue ladies and gentlemen right there pat set me up like t-ball hitting this one out so what are we going to talk about next what we're going to talk about is the 10k giveaway on instagram if you tag a friend and like and subscribe Super Retriever Series on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, you can win an amazing prize package. It includes a Lucky Duck kennel, two bags of Yukonuba Premium Performance Food with a complimentary nutritional consultation with one of Yukonuba's pro representatives, a Yeti dog bowl, wet mutt bumpers, and some SRS swag. You're winning so much that I literally had to swallow in between and couldn't list all that in one breath. So if you win this prize pack, it is an awesome prize pack. Great opportunity, so be sure to go on Instagram. Super Retriever Series, no spaces, just one word. Super Retriever Series. Like it, subscribe to Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Tag a friend, and you could be our big winner. Tell you what, man. As we I'm see Bobby and Legend walk off the line, they say good luck. And I think Jay Paul is over here giving some words of encouragement for his partner, Bobby Wills. You're going to make it in. You're going to make it in. I said that to you. I said it. Walking to the line is uh, Daisy and Clark Kennington. 
They came in with a three series total of 155. Daisy, a three year old female. Luke, when you have a younger dog like this, a three-year-old who's shown that much excitement, good thing or bad thing? Um, I think when you're looking at a test like this with such a big bird, you're, you're, you're kind of, that's almost a good thing. You really want that energy to push and drive out there. So I believe Bobby and Legend picked up a 32. Wow. Yeah. And it came pretty much all on that middle bird. And that's a good score, I mean, that's very appropriate. 22 just on the to the area alone. Of course, that's unofficial. We'll have to have the graphic come up to confirm it. Daisy qualifies for this event by getting a second place. And that gives her five SRS open points, puts her a win away from getting her title. Dang, that was a really, really nice go bird right there, too. She saw it really well. Clark, of course, a uh, previous crown champion. That score that Jay Paul said a minute ago, unofficial, is now the official score, a 32 for Legend and Bobby Wills. It's going to give Bobby and Legend a four series total of 190. Nice little mark there by Davey. I think I saw the dog kind of cut back to the right, came off a little bit to the left, but it looked to me like she made a really good decision headed for the walk. Well, there's that there's dark spot we oh, talked yeah. about right there. We, there. we got a good view of it there. I mean, there's a handle, that's all you can do. All the dog's got to do their part. Dog looking to take a lot of water, but that's worked out really nice for every dog that's done it previously. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wait Just don't a minute, break down. Gentlemen. Wait a minute. Ah! Yeah. I haven't seen much of that, but I I actually expected to see more of that when they saw. It. Not the ah! easiest handle in the world.
I don't know if he... We can't see the dog. The jib can't see the dog. I see some water commotion down there. Do you think he's down in the edge of the water? Nope, there he is, up behind the barn. Not two, what he two. was hoping for when he got when the dog came out with the hill. Yeah, he's got, but he got the other two birds really good and a quick handle. He's going to put them in a good spot. You know that thirty-two just gave Bobby a one ninety, which locks him in. Worst he could do is fifth place. He was only three points behind Clark and Daisy. They came in with one fifty-five. Bobby came in with one fifty-eight. They need to hold their position for a thirty-four better. 35 puts him in a tie. By virtue of the better scoring this is, it would bump Bobby ahead of place. Clark's always said Daisy's a special dog at a young age. He knew that she was going to be something special, and I'm sure her owner, Chris Schaefer, is glad to see her here on the stage. Grab a rebird, so uh, real quick while we have a chance here, we're going to thank our sponsors of the 2023 Super Retriever Series Crown Championship, presented by Yukonuba. Super Retriever Series Crown Championship would like to thank all our gifting sponsors for their donations to our competitor teams. They're partners, ready to do whatever it takes. Athletes that pound for pound can outrun, outwork, and outperform anybody you're watching on Sunday. No contract required. You don't waste that kind of potential. You train it, fuel it, unleash it. You feed nutrition that holds nothing back. The Yukonuba Premium Performance Lineup. This is no ordinary puppy. And this is no ordinary story. This is the tale of a hero in the making. He is born, raised, and fed to rise to any challenge. Because he is no ordinary dog. He's a Yukonuba dog. Yukonuba provides animal proteins and high levels of DHA for a strong body and mind. Feed the extraordinary in your puppy and make your dog 
a Yuka Nuba dog. The Splash Super Pool is the original above ground soft sided pool. We've been in business for almost 40 years now. We're still proudly made in the USA, and we've been serving our community in all kinds of ways. They're all testaments as to the strength and the durability of this super pool. And we've been serving the dock diving community for almost 20 years. The pool that they use is the exact same pool that you'll use in your backyard. So just remember, as you're watching these dogs fly through the air, this is the same super pool that you could have in your backyard. Splash Super Pools. In my Louisiana, the day starts at 4 a.m. In my Louisiana, every meal is a celebration. My Louisiana really makes me wonder. Ours is fast! With real life swamp creatures! In my Louisiana, music is a way of life. My Louisiana is sheer magic. From sun up to sundown. Till sun up again. What will your Louisiana be? When you find your Louisiana, you feed your soul. Welcome back to the 2023 Super Retriever Series Crown Championship presented by Yukonuba. We have just a few dogs here left coming to the line here in the Series 4. In fact, next to the line will actually be our amateur leader coming into Series 4, which was John Lamar and Smokey. They came in with a 16-point lead over Tex and Stuart Williams, and after Tex and Stuart ran, basically here's the situation. So if John and Smokey get 80 or less points. They will maintain the amateur lead heading into the final. The other number we need to keep in mind is 151. If they get 151 or less, they are in the finals. If they get 152 or more, Frank and Carol Cato move in. So Frank and Carol sitting there right now on the bubble, and as long as John and Smokey get a 151 or less, they make it in. As we see Smokey, a six-year-old black male, take the line here with John Lamar, handler. And gentlemen, what are we thinking? I think that they're going to get in. I think they're going to be in. But I'll tell you what, 80 points, you can rack it up in a hurry. Mm -hmm. We haven't got Clark's score yet. It'll be interesting to see what it is. But Of course, John Lamar and Smokey, team of the year winners. Looks like he got a good look at the Longbird. Yep, there we see it right before the break. Clark Kennington and Daisy Rip put up a 66. Did a really good job on the go bird and the middle bird. Had a clean handle, but had to handle off of the big point of land there all the way across the big water to get that bird in 66. And so as you can see, that was a pretty nice job. But Daisy and Clark, of course with that 66, gives them a 221. Means 208 came in, and that means that Carter and Shooter are guaranteed a spot now. I said it earlier, and I was wrong. Actually, I was I was predicted. Oh, they are you're now predicting the future. A spot in the final six. John doesn't waste any time kicking Smokey off here at all. Got a nice big visible bird on this go bird here. Looks like he's in a good spot. He's just kind of checking up maybe it's just a little bit short. That should get you over here pretty quick. Tell you the wind is right. Come into the dog's favor if you get just a little bit deep of it. Sometimes you feel like you're everywhere but right on top of the bird. I'm really shocked that this dog is not Wait a minute, this Wait bird yet. Right there. Yeah. Thank you. You see where that dog picked that bird up gives you a really good indication of how. I felt the wind a little bit on my right ear quarter and away, so he needed to get behind the bird to wind it, so you could kind of see how that played out. Yeah, and that gave you a good indication of how deep the bird was. 
I yeah. thought the dog was behind it and should be winning it, but he was actually hunting just a little bit in front of it. Under the arc of that bird. And pretty nice sporty. Job there. You're thinking two down, one to go. Good first look. Dog wants to, feels like he wants to look a little right. He kind of went where he wanted to look initially, and he's going to put decision. that. Guys, did you notice the light hitting the back of that camper that exactly that way? For I was just thinking it? about that. I wonder if that's I just what looked up, and I thought attention. something. Something got his attention for sure. See how the lighting is just shining off the back of that camper. Tay John's a very experienced amateur. He knows right here that. Right now it's about damage control. He's definitely still in a decent position. I can see the dog's tail in front of the holding barn there for a second. Depth, but this dog's still quite a bit short. He almost felt like he could use another one right there before he went over the ridge. this view, it feels like he's right at near the holding line, but he must be, you know, I don't know, 30, 40 yards short. Did he make a move to the right? There he yeah, is. He did, too. Just Boy, the he left frame of your camera there. Now he's back in the center. Now he's back over there. He's going to handle right to the bird, which 
But you know, that speaks volume to how challenging this actually is. I mean, if, if the jib can't see him with a zoom lens, how hard is it on these oh. handlers who have oh, you know, normal vision and are trying to look out there and see their dog? Very challenging. Did you pick it up right there? Yep. You know, it just it, it shows you if you if you kind of looked at the replay of where that dog wanted to look when he first spun around. As hard as he worked at changing his mind, he never really did. He went there, even when he handled, he kept what uh, just was insistent on, on looking to the right. <coughs> so what was his lead coming in there? Coming in, so he needed 80 or less to maintain the amateur lead to stay in first place. And he needed 151 or less to make the final six. I believe that he came into this with a 16 point advantage over second place and then we had a 65 scored correct uh, our second place team Stewart and Tech so yep 81 lead so 80 or less would have maintained that amateur lead any predictions it's gonna be close well good make it it's exciting for us I wasn't scoring it in my head as we went along, but he came out right. He stayed right for a pretty good while. We know that there's a five-point penalty in there, and that five-point penalty isn't just for getting there. If you stay in that position outside of whatever that line of demarcation that the judges have imaginarily drawn there, you can keep getting that. So I could say this, he could keep a very slim lead, or he could give it up by a few points either way. But you don't think there's any risk of him being... Oh, not, no, no, there's no way he picked up 150 points on that. No way. No. I'll buy you a case of beer tonight no, if you picked I up did, 150 I, points I didn't take that either. <laughs> We've gone from a beer or two to a six-pack to a case in a hurry there. I do think you're about to lose your double or nothing, though. I do, I do. I guess yeah. we got to buy our own beer tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you forgot that. <laughs> I'm not that old yet. Stem to the line, Hatch <laughs> and Lyle Steinman came into today in third, 147. Hatch is again one of those versatile dogs. He's an SRS champion, field champion, and he's also a hunting retriever champion. Kyle made a little move forward when that dog made me think that maybe that dog looked to the right. Maybe he had swung to that camper. Exactly what I was thinking. You see that little, see the, just the way the light's hitting it over there. It happens so often, you know, a lot of times you got round bales in a field and, angle of the sun just all of a sudden lights one up and everything changes. Smokey and John get a 99. A 99 for Smokey and John, okay. So that means that gives them a 264, which means, as we see Lyle send Hatch here, 264 for them. So what that means is your six dogs in the amateur finals tomorrow are Huck and Brian Broussard at 284. Blaze and Mike Gibson at 276. John Lamar and Smokey at 264. Blaze and Mike at 276. Wait, I already said that. Yeah. Yep. Waylon and Ernie at 259. Jason and Cash at 258. And Stuart and Tex at 2.30. We have a new leader. We have a new leader. But oh, for the time being. But also, that John Lamar and Smokey are in second place at 2.48, I believe. Correct. I think we made a mistake on your math there at some one place.
David's here frantically trying to do his math. And you know, Pat, you gave me a... Does that surprise you look when they threw that 99 up there? No, it doesn't. I'll tell you why. I said it could be close. It could go either way. I mean, felt like he could easily be over that 80. It really depends on how they're scoring him for being right there. And he was right for a protracted amount of time. I think he was probably taking significant, you know, five, 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 five. And the, were those for cast refusals or being right? Okay, here we go. Offline. Lyle had a good look there, didn't he? Looks like Lyle's thinking Hatch might have a little too much water, but, but Hatch is bending in there pretty good. Yeah. Hatch is a pretty intelligent dog. I would expect him to work this out pretty quickly. Yeah, and that's a good place to come out of here, too. Here's the right loop. Come on back. Got it. I'll tell you, I, I have a hard time being too worried about that out there. That was nice. Yep. yep. As Hatch comes back here, let's give you the official scores of the six amateurs that are moving on to our finals. So Huck and Brian Broussard will be in sixth place with 284, making the finals. Blaze and Mike Gibson in fifth with 276. Waylon and Ernie D'Antoni in fourth with 259. Cash and Jason Fassiter with 258. Third heading into the finals, Smokey and John Lamar, 248, second heading into the finals, and Tex and Stuart Williams will be leading us into the finals tomorrow with a 230. Back out here live now with Hatch in the open division. About to send him on that long bird here on the right hand side. We sent him on that left bird standing up. This one I thought maybe he'd bear down on him a little more, but maybe that is his way of doing it. Hatch! Well, he certainly Sent his name loud, didn't he? You're looking for a little left bend in this channel to help you a little bit. The next 15, 20 yards are going to be pretty crucial. Oh, look at him breaking for the water. Now you just got to swim across the pond. Okay. Hit the water good. You see Lyle's demeanor. He's got full faith in Hatch. He's not worried about him at all. No, he's very, very confident. But you'd like to see his head here in a minute. <laughs> Going across the pond. There you can see There he Lyle. is. You know Lyle, but you know we got the jib view, so Lyle can't see him yet. Lyle describes Hatch as a marking machine, says he's very intelligent. Think. And he remembers every setup. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, one of the things Farmer used to say, sometimes you need to know when to get out of their way, and maybe that's what you just said there. Mm -hmm. When you have a dog that's that good a marker, you gotta sometimes trust them. And looks pretty darn good. Feel a little bit of a breeze and a crosswind on that swim going left to right. I think Hatch just saw the holding blind and get a little bit of a right tug there. <laughs> truck telling us that, uh, our production truck telling us that uh, Hatch loves snacks and so does our. Uh, Jib operator, Jib Joe. Everyone's <laughs> big fans of snacks over here. Maybe if Lyle's got a couple in his pocket after this run, he can give one to Hatch and one to Jib Joe. Right, let's get back to Hatch. It's about Stephanie, to get interesting. Stephanie Steinman says Hatch's favorite snack is a Cheeto. Hatch and I have something in common. A Cheeto is a strong, mm -hmm. a very strong snack. Look at that move Ranks there. Ranks in the top five. And check the edge of the water. 
make a little glance over the holding line, break away from it. Well, that's just gonna get a fist bump. There from you go. Here. That that. Mm. Woo. Got it. Yep. <laughs> Lyle definitely pleased with that run, as you can see there, and. Uh, Pretty sure Hatch is going to get a Cheeto when he gets That's back right. to the truck. That's right. He's going to be shaking that bag of Cheetos when he comes <laughs> off the line. Well, it was a great run. There's that no doubt about that. Oh, my goodness. He yeah. killed that. Did you watch what he did when he got out of the water there? That, that, that's, I say some, some dogs are great markers. Some dogs are great finders. That dog looks just like he's probably bold. He made some really smart moves. You see how he checked the edge of the water, kind of went up, acknowledged the holding line, spun away from the holding line, bingo, Bert. That's not the first time he's done that, I wouldn't think. Beautiful. He's even going to swim back. Pat, we've seen two, we've seen two dogs kind of curve over on the right right there, and both of those dogs were Legend and Hatch, and they both have all-age experience. Do you think they were remembering where that gun was standing and going out there and looking for that information and working it off? Without a doubt. I mean, without a doubt. That's why you, that's why I say, I don't, Necessarily, feet. I always need to see that bird, but I better acknowledge that gun. That's right. I think that shows the intelligence that these dogs have to go out there and mm -hmm. gather that information and work that bird out. Well, yeah. There's just there's so many moving parts there, but that's just that was beautiful to see. I said earlier, watermarks are the last thing to develop. That's what you, you don't do that overnight. That's right. Time and repetition. <laughs> and hard work. That's right. Lots of hard work. We say CCR, not the band. Commitment, <laughs> consistency, and repetition. <laughs> Good stuff. Ash, I mean, not the tennis player. <laughs> Attitude spine. Head nice. Head nice. I was getting Good. there. I thought it was funny when the law walked up, he did look over at Pat and he said, and I'm not picking up the right hand bird, bird second. second. <laughs> well, you know, I mentioned that earlier, but it obviously is not even an option. Nobody's even considered it. And, you know, one of the things you look at, the reason, if dogs weren't doing that right hand bird and you were looking for an alternative option, you might consider it. But there's been enough good jobs at that point, And it obviously feels like that's the routine and the way to go. And boy, that was a... I think we'll see a new leader in the clubhouse with that one. Yeah, no doubt about it. And well deserved too, I mean, he earned that one. Good looking guy there too. Yeah, you hear Lyle come off line, that's a Cheeto for sure right there. <laughs> <laughs> for Hatch or Jib Joe. <laughs> Way to stick it, Lyle. Got Chuck McCall and Winston coming to the line. Winston is an SRS amateur champion and a grand hunting retriever champion, as well as qualified all age twice and a master hunter. Another one of these versatile dogs that we see in the Super Retriever series. Tell you, the angle of the sun makes that mark really, really visible. So that light on the back of that camper's gone. The lighting just shifted a little bit. all of our handlers to obviously fill out a little bit of information about what they know about their dog because who knows them better than their their handler and uh you know, chuck says that uh, winston's very disciplined around the water especially with water blinds and poison blinds it lines up extremely well level-headed able to utilize experience to work things out obviously 
We also asked him to list the weakness, and as you can imagine, with a nine-year-old dog, he said the only thing that might be a weakness is his vision's gone down. Hatch and Lyle got a 14. Wow, mm -hmm. wow, what a run. What a run. Man, look at that score. You got 14 for Lyle Steinman and Hatch. Chuck's leaning into this one. Boy, something's going to happen here in just a minute. Chuck was leaning into that just a little bit, trying to get everything that he could good out of it still had to handle unfortunately That one on that glow boat is definitely not the kiss of death, though. I mean, we saw we see a couple of dogs recover, come out, and pick the other two up clean. That dog's just got to get deep enough to win that mark. So I think what happened there, you see, he was a little outside the bird, <coughs> and he raised his head up, and it looked like he looked at one of those white pipes in the water. And I think that's when the handler said, I can't wait any longer. Like, I just thought I was watching his head and it looked like he just popped up and, and identified one of those white pipes and, well, you said he was a watery dog. That watery dog could jump in water and keep going and then you could really be in a world of hurt. Interestingly enough, Winston and Chuck have the same birthday, July 23rd. Now that is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've ever trained a dog that I shared a birthday with. Could be their lucky charm this year, who knows. Pat, have you? Well, it's funny you should say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we got a story here. Yeah. So I just did a tour of Nilo Kennels, John Olin's place. And King uh, Buck. King Buck. And Cotton Perschel and King Buck had the same birthdays. How about them apples? I tell you, a lot of good trainers came out of that St. Louis area. This Man, he, he kind of was juking and jiving. He broke left, broke right. But I'll tell you what, he made a good choice there to get in the water. Looks like he's in a good place. Of course, Chuck and Winston come into this final series with a 142. The only other dog left to run is uh, Cappy and Carter Turner, who came in with a quite sizable lead at 95. But of course, as we've seen here today, anybody can have a great run and anybody can have a bad run here in series four. So. Clouds have rolled in a little bit. The lighting's still really good. We have a new leader in the amateur division. We'll see if we have a new leader in the open division as well. I have a mark there. What's so I mentioned really Nilo Kennels. That's, that's John Olin from the Winchester. And a lot of history there. Did a lot of great things. I didn't realize that he started the OFA. The Orthopedic Foundation for Animals, which... I knew that. I used to live down the street from it. When I was a student at the University of Missouri in Columbia, I lived on Nifong Boulevard. If you take a look, OFFA.org, you'll see that it's on Nifong Boulevard there in Columbia. A lot of great history there, well. Lives on in these guys, doesn't it? I'll tell you some great trainers, Tommy Sorensen, Cotton Pershaw, great dogs came out of there. Yeah. What was August Belmont from? Well, here we go. Got that handle on that left. All right, let's see what he does here. He Sometimes that handle, you know, in that middle there just really creates some confusion on what bird you picked up. This could be interesting. Eh? The thing is, we've seen from watching the other dogs, the key is not where you go in. If you go into the left, you can be fine. Every dog that's went into the left and carried to the water has come out great. It's the dogs that break down and hunt. Let's see what we got here, guys. This is going to be, I can't see it from the jib angle yet, but he's pretty darn left. 
But he hadn't broke he down the hood. Tail. Whoa, wait a minute. Drive. Wait Drive. a minute. Ah, uh, there he goes. That's it. <sighs> Rut row. <laughs> I mean, that's what it comes to mind here for me. <laughs> Rut row, Shaggy. Ooh, he's going to let this play out, huh? Well, he doesn't have a choice really here. Yeah. I mean, he's he gave up some ground when he handled on the go bird, and he knows that. You know. I just don't see him. There's an example. Sometimes it's not as important to know where you're going as to know where you've been. And I think there was just, I just felt it in that dog's body language. He didn't know what bird he'd got. Yeah, here's the thing, too, analyzing this. I really believe that on that first handle with Winston, he was handling to protect what he had. You know, okay, I got. let me get a good clean handle here. I've still got the chance to win this thing. So he, he was handling to control the damage there. He didn't initiate the handle here because the handle here means the difference between not just controlling the damage you're playing tomorrow, but even if he makes the final six, he greatly reduces his chance to win. So he was going to do everything he could to give that dog the opportunity to make the decision to take the water. And you're asking yourself, what was going on in this dog's head? I think that handle that he and that dog had told him not to get in the water, which it did at the time. But I think it really created a degree of confusion that it caused what we just saw. And you just hate that for him. You know, Pat, I almost look at those two handles as offense and defense you know, for that sports analogy. To me, that first handle was just being defensive. You know, we came in here in second place. Let's protect our position, keep us in a spot where we can make a move tomorrow and maybe still come out to win. Whereas that second, on this last bird, you put in more of an offensive position. We need to you know, do everything we can to move the ball. I didn't see him for the longest time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, at that point, he just didn't have any. Like, he must have rode that. He wasn't going to get over there any other way. It's kind of uh, like the quarterback running for his life <laughs> instead of throwing it away. Yeah. You know, for real. I mean, letting that dog run and run and run around, and finally, it's okay. I, I got to throw it up into the stands. You know, so maybe we could play another down, and that's what. Oh, that's a good. That's a good way of putting it. You're not talking about a hail mary. You're no, 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 just, no. I'm telling. Well, so was it intentional grounding, or did he just was he out of the pocket? <laughs> In other words, actually what you're saying. He was way out of the pocket, and that's why I could throw it I also kind of viewed that as like when, you know, the coach is on the sideline, and he's like, oh, don't run it, don't run it. Oh, never mind, you got a first down. We're all right. And I came back with it. <laughs> Looked at him like, I came back with it. It's okay. Uh, I didn't do what you wanted me to do, but the end result was still the same, right? Yeah, but I mean, seriously, you know, you watch that quarterback, he runs around, runs around, and then you got to make the decision, okay, at what point am I going to throw it in the stands instead of taking the sack? And that's what he did. You know, he finally said, okay. If I don't throw it in the stands right now, I'm going to take a sack. He blows the whistle, probably. and then he comes back on the next down, and, you know, It kind of depends whether your last name is Mahomes or not. <laughs> yeah, some of those quarterbacks can just pull it out. But you're, you're right. I think that's a great analogy. Yep. Don't take the sack there. Take the, th don't <laughs> get take the field the goal. <laughs> Move on and fight another day. Exactly. But he was scrambling for sure. Yep. Yeah. Wow, we're going to... I, I, I really never thought we'd get this done, but we got it done with time to spare, didn't we? Mm -hmm. One dog left. I think once again, no matter how this shakes out, you got to be proud of Winston and Chuck. Winston had a great year making it to the semifinals. He qualified with four different handlers this year, which is kind of a special in itself. Um, Chuck and Winston showed great, showed that they had the talent to be here, and, and they did a great job. And hopefully, Winston got it in him to come back next year. That owner's headed to Canada for his first trip tomorrow. Sunday, so he'll be there. Yeah, Wesley's headed yeah. up there, isn't he? Yeah, Wesley's on his way to Canada to yeah. go duck him. <laughs> you know it's killing me not being here. 
Got Mr. Carter coming up here with Cappy. Cappy came in with 95 faults. Cappy was also runner up, second place in Yukonuba Team of the Year. Last dog to run today. You know, in 2020, Bang was the first uh, dog to win the crown and win Team of the Year in the same year. And now I believe we have both of our Team of the Year dogs guaranteed a spot in the finals. Just shows how hard it is to do both. That's right. Sometimes when you have a bunch of good weekends, it's hard to have a good week. Mm -hmm. So 115 with Chuck McCall and Winston here. Of course, they came in with a 142. So 257 total. Carter's, Carter's rhythm is the same every time. The first time I thought that bird was harder to see. Mm -hmm. Our lighting has just gotten a little cloudy. to jump in his lap. Have to do a little he might have to sell him on this mark a little bit he kind of looked away when he got up i agree looks like he definitely looked away right at the most inopportune moment there he put him in a good spot mm -hmm. Jay Paul had to step away for a moment, but he's back. Jay Paul, while you were away, Pat said that he thinks that maybe Cappy didn't fully see this go bird here, but that Carter did put him on a on a good line to go get put it. Put him anyways. under the arc. Yeah, and he's okay. trying to will him to it now, I'll tell you. Right in there somewhere? He's putting on a really good hunt here, though. Yeah, I don't think there's a risk of him leaving. It just, look at he's got that. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, he hunted the area the entire time. <laughs> I don't think they're really going to gig him very hard on that. Carter came in here with a pretty good sizable lead, too, so he definitely had ground that he could give up. So, the biggest concern that I would be, have here is how much memory did he burn down? Did he burn up? 
you know, there's been as much trouble on that bird almost as the longbird. They caught her right now, staking one down, thank goodness. I'm sure he was a little bit nervous. He's fixing to regroup. He's always thinking about this, playing it out in his head. See him doing the replays on it. But it has a nice rhythm about them. Anyway. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, there's no there's no mystery on what he's thinking. I think he's wanting me to come back to the left, but I'm not so sure he's that far right. Look at he's got the little hand signal to get him left, and he's got the one to get him to yeah. slow down. Reminds me of the baseball player yeah. Boom. trying to keep the ball, you know, yeah. fair instead yeah. of foul. Like, <laughs> get fair, get fair. Oh, yeah. Carter definitely yeah. right there tried to guide him left. Look at him, <laughs> look at him. I think Carter would swim out and get that bird if you asked him. <laughs> <laughs> I think getting those two birds clean puts Carter in a position he feels like he can play it pretty safe to maintain his lead. And is Carter a safe player? Oh. Hey, what, is, what, is that, what does playing safe mean here? Just don't let yourself get in any trouble. You know, don't take okay, any you chances. Okay, you not so much in the sin, but what you do. Okay, I see don't, what you're saying. What we say is don't hope, handle. Okay. I, I like that. I've said it a million times, I say to my people, identify the gun, influence to the bird. He's trying to get him to remember the gun. Got a little bit of a right break. For those of you watching at home, there will be a quiz at the end. You'll have to know what ASH stands for. You'll have to fill in the blank. Don't hope, handle. You'll have to complete J. Paul's line, no gas, no work. <laughs> Hope you I all got, got a no pen and paper, because this, this knowledge that they're passing on to y'all, there, um, there will be a quiz tomorrow after the finals. You know, if I were Carter, I wouldn't be real happy with this line, but I don't think I'd be real terrified about it. He can afford a quick handle here. He came in with a nice, nice cushion. Well, if he was going to quick handle, he'd have done it there. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, he was looking for, he's, He'd have done it on that ridge. All right on it. Cappy has the momentum to get there, and that's all Carter he's was looking find for. He's going to that bird. Look, he's at the holding line. Whoop. He isn't he leaving it now. He may, he may wallow a little bit, but he didn't get... He's actually going to... Watch how they do this. Oh, he, he got a, so close to it. Come no, on back watch. He's got to swing away. Get a little deep. He'll make one more in. And then <sighs> probably break left here. Pat, take a look at the lake. I think I you're mean, fixing to hear the crowd. Yep. Uh, got it. <laughs> The most important thing is, am I buying my own beer or are you buying it now? I don't, we got to get the final tally. I'm pretty sure I'm buying it. Hey, that was fun to watch, wasn't it? What a great day. Stick with us. We're about to run some scores here as well. It was a great day. Actually, on the double or nothing, I think I won. So okay. We're going right. to have to tally it up. It's going to be close. Speaking of tallying it up, we're tallying up the final scores here. Uh, we'll give you the full scores uh, of the... Uh, Open division here in a moment. Somebody pandemonium uh, breaking loose behind right, us. Exactly. So uh, as Cappy and man. Carter finish their run here, uh, we'll go our six finalists here in the amateur division. Uh, Stuart Williams and Tex lead us at 2:30. Uh, John Lamar and Smokey at 2:48. Jason Flasser and uh, Cash at 2:58. Ernie D'Antoni and Waylon at 2:59. Mike Gibson and Blaze at 276. Brian Broussard and Huck at 284. And while we wait for our open division finals, for those of you keeping track, it is uh, Jay Paul buys zero beers, Pat buys zero beers, everyone buys their own. Um, but guys, in all seriousness, what a great day today. I mean, we got through 24 <laughs> dogs. 
like Pat said, didn't know if we'd get through them all, but all of them got a really good run here today at, at Series 4. Judges put together a heck of a test. Uh, what's your takeaway entering the finals tomorrow? Whew. You know, I bet I've seen a lot of 10 series, and this is going to be the equivalent of mine, our national 10 series. I think anything, anything goes. I think these guys, these judges aren't going to let up. They're not going to protect anybody. Uh, I mean, I, and I'll tell you what, Carter's going for the kill, but, uh, but there's plenty of, and how about uh, Lyle coming up and sticking it there? That puts a little heat on him. I believe that was the best score of the day, was it not? I believe so. Awesome yeah. stuff. And how about those water blinds this morning? I mean, we saw a, a cool set of marks. Those water blinds were fast and furious. David, it was wonderful to meet you, and I can't, I'm looking forward to working with you again. Likewise. Jay Paul, while we still got a couple minutes here, let's talk about the uh, amateur division tomorrow. What, uh, what are you expecting there? You know, in the amateur division, we, we don't have a whole lot of distance down in the pack. Let's take a look at the, what is the best score coming out? And, What's our script? A 230 there? and six places in a 284. Yeah, so you're talking first to sixth, 54 points. This is anybody's game. Exactly. I don't see that anybody has a clear commanding lead. You know, you would have to say that Mr. Ernie's hot right now. Um, Shooter also had a, a great one run. I'm sorry. Mr. Ernie's very, very hot now. And Tex has been doing really, really well. Too. He came in looking good, really, really strong in the last series. You can't count out Blaze and Mike Gibson either. John Lamar, Smokey, they've been around, so, I mean, hey. Now here's a look at our uh, our open or our pro division, the uh, six that make the finals here. So Cappy and Carter Turner still in the lead at 129. Hatch and Lyle Steinman now in second at 161. Legend and Bobby Wills at 190 and third entering our Final series, Cash and Justin Hergert with 200. Then Shooter with Carter Turner at 208. And Zeus with Carter Turner at 214. So those are your six dogs heading into the final. And Pat, since I just asked Jay Paul about the uh, amateur division, I'll ask you about the open division. Uh, thoughts here on these six dogs heading in? Well, first of all, how about Carter with three of the six? And that's just incredible now is that an advantage for him to get up the line tomorrow three times yeah certainly it is uh, there's a bigger gap between first and six in the open it's all going to depend on what what kind of test we look at tomorrow you know it's uh but anytime you've got only six dogs anything can happen anything can happen well first to first to six 85 85 points i mean so anybody's in this and we're going to get started tomorrow. Our start time here on the live stream, I've been told by our truck, will be around 10 a.m., so please tune in at 10 a.m. Central Time, uh, and we will get started with our finals tomorrow. So what does that mean? We will be crowning two Super Retriever Series crown champions tomorrow, one in the amateur division, one in the open division. Can't wait to get started tomorrow, but for now... For Pat Burns and J. Paul Jackson, I'm David Hamilton. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow on the 2023 Super Retriever Series Crown Championship presented by Yukonuba. Have a good night, everybody. Ciao. The Super Retriever Series Crown Championship would like to thank Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission for the opportunity to showcase our retriever teams. We would also like to thank the sponsors of the Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission. Your puppy only gets one start to set the foundation for a lifetime of performance at your side. Fuel growth and activity, support digestive health, and give him a training edge to one day flush.
point, track, retrieve. So when the gear comes out, he'll be ready. Make every milestone count. The Splash Super Cool is the original above ground soft sided cool. We've been in business for almost 40 years now. We're still proudly made in the USA. And we've been serving our community in all kinds of ways. They're all testaments as to the strength and the durability of this super pool. And we've been serving the dock diving community for almost 20 years. The pool that they use is the exact same pool that you'll use in your backyard. So just remember, as you're watching these dogs fly through the air, this is the same super pool that you could have in your backyard. Splash Super Pools. The Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission is here to help you with your amateur, collegiate, professional, or Olympic sporting event. Centrally located in the Arklatex area, Shreveport Bossier is a premier sports destination, ideal for hosting sporting events of any size. With our wide variety of venues, including stadiums, convention centers, rivers, and universities, we are sure to have the perfect location for any event. Our team is ready to make your event a success. Visit us online at ShreveportBossierSports.com or on Facebook at Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission and let us host your next event. The Super Retriever Series Crown Championship is presented by Yukonuba. Sporting dogs give us everything we ask and then some. Their nutrition should do the same. And by the Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission, teaming up with our community to bring sporting events to Shreveport Bossier City, Caddo and Bossier Parishes. Margaritaville Resort Casino. Louisiana Tourism, feed your soul. Thor's Boats, drop the hammer. Splash Super Pools. And by Lucky Duck Kennels. Your puppy only gets one start to set the foundation for a lifetime of performance at your side. Fuel growth and activity, support digestive health, and give him a training edge to one day flush, point, track, retrieve. So when the gear comes out, he'll be ready. Make every milestone count with game-changing puppy fuel. Yukonuba Premium Performance Puppy Pro. The Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission is here to help you with your amateur, collegiate, professional, or Olympic sporting event. Centrally located in the Arklatex area, Shreveport Bossier is a premier sports destination, ideal for hosting sporting events of any size. With our wide variety of venues, including stadiums, convention centers, rivers, and universities, we are sure to have the perfect location for any event. Our team is ready to make your event a success. Visit us online at ShreveportBossierSports.com or on Facebook at Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission and let us host your next event. Two birds of a feather. We flock together every day, and I'll do anything to protect that loyalty. Durable, dependable, and downright dirty. And I'm not just talking about my dog. This five-star crash test rated kennel is lightweight, secure, and made right here in America. 
Loyalty goes both ways. The Splash Super Pool is the original above ground soft sided pool. We've been in business for almost 40 years now. We're still proudly made in the USA and we've been serving our community in all kinds of ways. They're all testaments as to the strength and the durability of this super pool. And we've been serving the dock diving community for almost 20 years. The pool that they use is the exact same pool that you'll use in your backyard. So just remember, as you're watching these dogs fly through the air, this is the same super pool that 